Inferno, it's Montana State and Eastern Washington to open up Big Sky play today. Before we get you a uh, Big Sky scoreboard, let's bring you the Star Spangled Banner, which is coming up from the Eastern Washington Band right now. Sandy Williams, Spokane civil rights activist and champion of equal equity and inclusion, who recently passed away during a tragic plane crash in Puget Sound. Sandy left a legacy at Eastern Washington University coordinator of the Pride Center, which she helped open and created foundational programming in 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in a moment of silence to honor Sandy Williams. So after that moment of silence, now just about ready for our Star Spangled Banner as we get ready for the kickoff today, Montana State and Eastern Washington on what is a beautiful day for football. I mean, this is as good as it gets, Mikey. This is perfect. We've got a little crisp pool in the air. I mean, this is just the way you draw it up. Absolutely. You can definitely tell it's fall, Keaton, but it's got the sun shining. There's no rain, which you can get here, obviously, in the Pacific Northwest. It's a beautiful day for football. All right, now our Star Spangled Banner. wrapped up and we are just about ready for football but first let's check the uh, big sky scoreboard with a heavy slate of action today one game going on right now northern colorado is at home against idaho state northern colorado up seven to nothing early in the second quarter of that one coming up uh, later today uc davis is going up against weber state that's going to be a real tough matchup you got two of the top quarterbacks in the conference miles hastings for uc davis tops of the conference at 785 yards of passing seven touchdowns already and bronson Barron of weber state he's second in conference in yards so far six touchdowns he's the reigning offensive player of the week so that's going to be a fun matchup to keep an eye on especially with uc davis coming to bozeman next week also today, Sac State, number seven in the nation on the FCS side, is going to Colorado State. They've got a great shot to take down Colorado State, which is off to their worst start since 2010. Also later today, number two, Montana, going uh, or hosting uh, Portland State. It's homecoming for the Grizz today. They really didn't do a ton in their non-conference, so this will be one of their first tests uh, as they get into Big Sky play. Idaho is at Northern Arizona later today as well. Idaho is coming off their first win of the season under uh, first-year head coach Jason Ack. That's Idaho at Northern Arizona. So that is the Big Sky scoreboard today. Take one more break, and uh, when we get back, we will be just about set and ready to go for kickoff between Montana State and Eastern Washington. This is Montana State football from Learfield.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to Big Sky Play. It's Montana State and Eastern Washington. Before we dive into this matchup, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Bobcat Football. We are live in Cheney, Washington, getting ready to go. My name is Keaton Gologli alongside our analyst, Mikey Ryder. Dan Davies is down on the sidelines. We'll check in with him in a moment. And we've got Dylan McPhail on the board here at Eastern Washington. John O'Connor is back in the Bozeman studios. All right, Mikey, here we go. It's Big Sky play, man. This is a huge game to kick off the conference schedule. Yeah, it really is. This is a conference rival has been for years and years, and, and like I said, it, it typically falls in the middle of the schedule, maybe later in the year, but here we are opening up conference play, first game of conference, and, and uh, we find ourselves in Cheney. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. we got beautiful weather. I'm excited. This is going to be a good ball game as Montana State takes on a new-look Eastern Washington squad. Let's uh, check in here with Dan Davies, who's down in on the sideline, and see how things are shaking up there. Dan, what's the vibe down to the field? Man, I tell you what, this is a great Bobcat section, and cheering section here behind the Bobcat bench. Beautiful day, 72 degrees, light breeze. You couldn't ask for a better day here towards the end of September. Let's do it. It's a beautiful day, as Dan mentioned. And yeah, you're right. There, Mikey, there are a lot of gold T-shirts out there on the opposite side of the field. There's a lot of Bobcats who are here in town. Yeah, MSU travels well always, but, uh, you know, it's a fairly reasonable drive from Bozeman, and, um, throughout Montana, and here we are. They travel well, and kudos to the Bobcat faithful. But on top of that, uh, I've heard a lot of people are going to make this drive from here to Seattle and uh, go catch Troy Anderson and, and the Atlanta Falcons who are out there too. So kind of a nice double dip of football if that's the way you play it. Yeah, absolutely. And then they get to go catch uh, Will Disley as well, yep. Bozeman High product, tight end for the, for the, uh, the Seahawks. Uh, nice little football road trip if you're asking me. <laughs> I was asking you, and that was exactly the answer that I expected as we get ready for the first conference game of the year. Montana State coming in at 2-1. and one. We're back home next week. UC Davis in town. That's going to be an 8.15 p.m. Mountain Time kick next week. So a little bit later, but it should be a lot of fun. That'll be parent and family weekend as well. Then homecoming after that, back home again against Idaho State. So you do have two conference home games coming up after this. So if you can get the win here, on the road obviously it's still not going to be easy uc davis a very very good program but if you can get that first road win out of the way you're going to feel like you're off on the right foot for sure yeah absolutely and this is a place where the bobcats have struggled historically um i think it's a three and 13 record correct um, yep. uh, as of late and so it's a tough place to play they take a lot of pride here in protecting the inferno at roost field and it's going to be a, a really fun environment for these Bobcats today. Yeah, Montana State snapping a seven-game losing streak against Eastern Washington in the meeting here last year to stay undefeated in conference. Montana State won that game 23-20. to Isaiah Fonse had a big run in the fourth quarter, a 43-yard touchdown run, had over 200 yards. Lance McCutcheon had a big game in that one and a big uh, score to take the lead in the second quarter of that contest. All right, ready to go. Eastern Washington will kick off from right to left. Marquis Johnson is back to receive the uh, the kickoff. Montana State in their traditional road unis, the uh, navy blue pants, white jerseys, blue font, and the gold and blue around the shoulder pads, white helmets with the uh, white Bobcat logo up on top. Eastern Washington in the red pants, red jerseys, white type, black helmets, and black socks. We are ready to go. Eastern Washington will kick it off from right to left. Here it is. A left-footed kick is in the air toward the middle of the end zone and out of the back of the end zone, and it is a touchback to open up the day. All right, let's uh, check our Wheat Montana weather report. 71 degrees and sunny. It is just the way you draw it up on top of the red Inferno field. And here we go, Mikey. Montana State gets their first crack on the offensive end. Yeah, absolutely, and they're going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. This Eastern defense likes to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Uh, and those corners are going to be tested today. They'll be on an island, but they've got quite a few returners from last year. And uh, look for this Bobcat offense to try and establish the run game, albeit through creativity with the lack of running backs, but they'll stay committed to it, no doubt. First snap from the 25-yard line to Malat. He will keep it on an option, running right, and he gets tackled quickly right at the line of scrimmage. 
and it'll be a no game as Montana State will line it up again. I mentioned that this defense has given up uh, roughly six yards a carry, and so uh, they struggled. Now, uh, one of those was against the University of Oregon, who is a you know an up game, very talented, but this Bobcat team is going to try and stay committed to this ground game, I have no doubt. Montana State has Patterson and Thomas spread out to the left side. Alston, the wide receiver on the right side. Elliott in the backfield next to Tommy Millad out of the shotgun formation. On the right hash mark, he takes the snap on second down, looking to throw, tucks it, running up the middle, and he gets swarmed. He is tackled right at the line of scrimmage again by Joshua Jerome, the de defensive tackle, one of the all-conference returners for this defensive line for Eastern Washington. Yeah, that's a coverage sack. Really no windows to throw into for Tommy and steps up into the pocket and there's the veteran defensive lineman and Josh Jerome. Pivotal third down here. Let's see if they're going to air it out, try and work the sidelines. Third and 11, empty backfield. Three wide receivers left, two to the right. Here's the snap, looking to throw right, and it's a bad throw out of the reach of Robbie Alston. The timing just wasn't there, and Montana State goes three and out on their first offensive possession of the day. Yeah, no, no timing there. Fairly good coverage on the outside, as I mentioned. Going to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups, but uh, there was nothing there. Uh, Robbie Alston tried to hitch it up right there at the sticks. And it was just wide sailed right to the, or a, a wide sailed ball to the right side. So that'll be the uh, first punt for Montana State. Bryce Lighton is out there to boot it away. Tommy Sullivan in as the long samper. He gives it to Sullivan. Here's the kick, right footed kick, spiraling toward the 35 yard line. And it's caught there with a fair catch. And Eastern Washington will open up their first possession of the game from their own 35 yard line. And it's a new offense. Gunnar Talkington now taking over the sixth year Eagle. Only got on scholarship last year. Won a hotly contested quarterback battle before the season began. He's already been named Big Sky Conference player of the week once that was after the week one win against Tennessee State and now he'll go to work here with three wide receivers to the right one to the left and the halfback in the shotgun formation on the left hash mark first down snap Talkington looking to throw steps up into the pocket fires just in front of the first down marker catch is made and the tackle finally comes down after a moment really got spun around there but a modest and a pretty big gain on that first down play yeah, and there's his go-to guy, Efton Chisholm. He's a, a two-year starter. He was a freshman All-American, and he'll get quite a few touches today along with uh, Freddie Roberson, who's a three-year starter. They're going to try and, and uh, really spread the ball out here. Uh, they really only have one rushing touchdown this year, so they're going to throw it. Here's the snap. He will hand it off, running up the middle. He is dropped just shy. That was Brody Greeby on the stop and Justice Jackson on the run, so it will be third down and one. Nothing fancy there, just a zone play, which is really what they like to do in terms of their run game, run scheme, nothing too crazy for them. Mostly just zone, which means that offensive line is really blocking a space, not necessarily a guy. And they just try and make a mash and let those running backs find a hole. Now a wildcat formation with a running back in as the quarterback. He takes the snap, running right. He's got space and a first down across the 50-yard line. He's down the right sideline, wide open, just as Jackson into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Boy, that was a quick, quick strike. It was a wildcat formation, and Justice Jackson, Jackson able to get some space on the right side, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, that was uh, out of the wildcat position, as you mentioned, and they really ended up getting plus one to that side, and uh, they pulled the guard, and there was nobody there. The Bobcat defense was short to the uh, offense's right side, and uh, pretty easy run there for their first rushing touchdown of the season. 56 yards on the rushing touchdown. And it was actually uh, Micah Smith who was the running back there. Here's the snap, the hold, and the kick, and the PAT is up and good. So 7 nothing lead for Eastern Washington. They get a big strike on third down to take the initial lead. Eastern Washington up 7 nothing. 12.30 to go in the first quarter. We'll take a break. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
down to Dan Davies on the sideline. Dan? Yeah, we are here with uh, Joe Roberts, uh, one of the captains in the 1984 National Championship team that lives here in Spokane. Joe, that was uh, a quick drive there for the Eagles. Yeah, a little too quick, Dubs. Tough way to start the football game, that's for sure. Yeah, Joe, uh, I know you get back to Bozeman occasionally here, but your two sons live here with their grand, your grandkids and so forth. What's that like to have them so close? Oh, it's awesome, you know, having our both boys here and our grandkids, it's, it's, it's really special. We're fortunate to have them and, uh, you know, just really blessed. And uh, I overheard you saying that you were going to get to Bozeman for homecoming. Is that correct? Yeah, really excited. I try to come back at least once once a year for a game and see all my teammates from the 84 championship and uh, tell a few lies and have a good time. And then the most important question is, how's the golf game? <laughs> the golf game's shaky at best, but I'm happy to be playing. All right. Thanks, Joe. Great to visit with you. Uh, back up to the booth. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dan. Builders First Source is the leading supplier of professional-grade building materials. Find one of our nine Montana locations at bldr.com. Builders First Source, a proud sponsor of Bobcat football. Eastern Washington ready to kick it away. So Montana State goes three and out on their first possession. They went one yard backwards while uh, Eastern Washington scores on their third play from scrimmage. Micah Smith along 56 yard strike out of the Wildcat formation on the running play and Montana State finds themselves down seven to nothing with 12.30 to go in the first quarter. Here's the kickoff from right to left. The left footed kick, an end over end kick into the end zone and it lands on the white type A of that end zone. Montana State will start this drive at their own 25 yard line. All right, uh, all right. Well, that was a, a rocky first start there and a rocky first possession, but you got to bounce back quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to saddle up right now. I, one of the things I want to mention is when you're on the road, this is a tough environment, uh, unique setting, uh, but you've got to start fast. That was not an ideal start. They got to get back uh, into rhythm here, move the chains, and uh, it starts with the pass or with the running attack. They got to get th some things moving on the running attack and then open up some passing lanes. Elijah Elliott in the backfield in the shotgun formation with Tommy Malott. Here's the snap. Malott holds it. He will toss it to Willie Patterson just across the line of scrimmage, and he is tackled very, very quickly again. That will be a three, make it four-yard gain, second down and six. Yeah, using some creativity there, getting Willie from his wide receiver position, motioning, a uh, little jet motion, and he bumps into the flat, and uh, at least moving the sticks just a little bit. Four yards will take it on first down. Four wide receivers set, including the tight end. Pickering over on the right side. Here's the snap. Malat tosses to Elliott. He's got some space on the outside. A pass to Patterson block. He's got a first down across the 40-yard line, up near the 45, and a great little toss and run to Elijah Elliott for first interstate bank first down, first yeah, of the day. Yeah, really nifty play there. It was uh, they, they used a, um, a zone read look and act like it was going to be zone read to freeze that defense really quickly, and then he turns it into a speed option to his left side. Nice pitch with his left hand, moving the chains. 13-yard pickup. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Elliott the back behind Mallott in a pistol formation. Here's the snap. Fakes the handoff, throws to the outside. Patterson makes a contested catch, breaks one tackle across the 50-yard line and up to the Eagle 46-yard line. And that's another first down. First Interstate Bank first down after the 12-yard gain as Montana State gets into enemy territory for the first time. Yeah, that should be a confident throw. That was nice. That's a confident builder there for Tommy. Nice throw. That was actually a long throw. Again, they're playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. That was a tight window that he put it into. Good, strong hands by Willie Patterson just on a little hitch route and then breaking a tackle and moving the sticks. They put it at the 45 yard line of the Eagles. First and 10, two wide receivers left, one to the right. That's Alston by himself on the right side with Elliott in the backfield and a shotgun. Snap to Malat. he will hand it off. Elliott running across the tackle. He breaks a tackle. He's got a first down, down the right sideline. Elliott out to the pylon. He is into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Robbie Alston, the late block inside the 10-yard line, and Elijah Elliott with a long strike. That's how you get the running game going. Yeah, absolutely, and you just said it. Credit Robbie Alston. He was all over that corner, mauling him and uh, creating a running lane. Really shifty run there by Elijah Elliott. Credit the offensive line up front. Just a simple zone play, an outside zone play. Nice cut, put, makes one cut, puts his foot in the dirt, finds a nice seam. Really good team rush there. 
Sullivan into snap to lighten the holder. Glessner lining up the PAT to try to tie this game early in the first quarter. The snap, the hold, the kick. It is up and it is good. We got a tie game. It's 7-7 with 10.40 to go in the first quarter and uh, Montana State tying it up on the 45 yard run by Elijah Elliott. We'll take a break. The score one more time, 7-7 Montana State and Eastern. 10.40 to go in the first. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Montana State responding. They get a 45-yard touchdown run from Elijah Elliott. It's 7-7 between Montana State and Eastern Washington. 10.40 to go in the first quarter. Let's go down to the sidelines. Dan, uh, what did you see on that touchdown round run by Elliott? Well, saw some great downfield blocking, uh, without a doubt. Bobby Alston uh, had his guy, and, and uh, great read by uh, Elliott with that run to get into the end zone as he... Uh, directed the blocks and, and uh, found those seam. Montana State just about ready to kick it off here, but that was exactly what the Bobcats needed in their response as Blake Glessner lines up this kickoff from left to right in a tie game early in the first quarter, 10 at 40 to go in the first. Glessner approaches. The right-footed kick is in the air toward the left to hash mark into the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. Touchback, Eastern Washington will start at their own 25-yard line. Mikey, that was just what Montana State needed. Oh, absolutely, and we, we said it right before the drive started. Look, they, you got to respond. you got to find a way to take the crowd out of it just a little bit and uh, get a little bit of momentum. And I'm encouraged because not only was that run, it was just a traditional run. It wasn't a, you know, what we saw last week with an empty set and a motion or anything like that. It was a traditional outside zone run play. And then the play before, I like just a simple out route and tight coverage and a confident throw by Tommy. Good sequence. Empty backfield, five wide receiver set. Here's the snap for Eastern. Talkington steps up into the pocket, fires over the middle, and it is caught. Efton Chisholm on a nice snag for a first down. It was a bit of a high throw, but he was able to go up and snatch that thing out of the air, getting to the 42-yard line of the Eagles. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of that. They're going to get into some empty formation with no uh, running backs back there. This defensive line has got to find a way to make Talkington uncomfortable early. Now one half back in a shotgun formation. Here's the snap, fakes the handoff, throws to the flat. Chisholm running along the right sideline after a short gain, and he is taken out of bounds by Ty Okada diving down to his ankles after about a five-yard gain. Yeah, just a simple bubble play. That's really an extension to their run game. They like to quickly get the ball out on the perimeter, get it in the receiver's hands quickly, and let him try and go do something with it. Nice tackle there by Ty in space. First and 10 from the 47-yard line out of the empty shotgun. Here's the snap of the throw over the middle, tipped and free, and a flag. Yep, the uh, Montana State defender got there just a little bit early, and that'll be pass interference. It was ready short. Yeah, that was it. Bang on the play. Pass interference, number three of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, good coverage on the play, just a step early. 
So Eastern Washington into Bobcat territory for their first snap in Montana State territory, but they had that long uh, touchdown run, uh, 56 yards for Micah Smith to open the scoring. So they're at the 38-yard line of MSU. Here's the snap. Talking 10, rolling out, doesn't have anywhere to go with it. Now turns the corner outside the numbers on the right side. He's got a first down. Ooh, he got a big hit. That was a heavy lick from Danny Ulua Lakepa, but he was able to kind of use his momentum and get that first down inside the 30. Wow, that was a big shot. I mean, he took him off of his feet. And uh, Talkington isn't a big guy, you know. He's not frail, but he's only 5'10", probably 200 pounds. And uh, that was a big shot there by Danny Ulua Lakepa. So they are up to the 28-yard line of Montana State for first and 10. 9.18 to go in the first tie game. Here's the snap and a handoff. Smith running left outside the numbers. He's got space on the sideline. Micah Smith into the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern Washington. A 28-yard run for Micah Smith, and Montana State struggling to stop the run early. Yeah, they, it was a, a pin and pull play. Uh, they had two guys pulling from right to left. And once again, they just don't have enough guys. Those Bobcats, when somebody pulls from one side to the other, you got to counter. You got to go across the, the other side of the center to match body for body. And they have not done that on either of those touchdown runs. Seth Harrison will line up the PAT for Eastern Washington to try to complete this score. They're all lined up. Here's the snap, the hold, and the kick. It is up and right through the middle and up out of the uh, up to the camera platform up there. It's the PAT is good and it's 14 to seven Eagles over the Bobcats. We'll take a break, 9.07 to go in the first quarter. A lot of offense to start conference play. That score one more time, Eagles 14, Bobcats seven. 9.07 left in the first. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Montana State trailing 14 to seven against Eastern Washington. Keaton Gologly alongside Mikey Ryder, Dan Davies down on the sidelines. Montana State does have one town pump touchdown. That was a long run from Elijah Elliott, but for Eastern Washington, two, uh, two possessions, two touchdowns, both from their running back, Micah Smith. He's got three carries, 86 yards, and two scores. And Mikey, the, the defense is gonna have to figure something out here. Yeah, and, and it really wasn't anything uh, extra special as far as schematics. Um, I told you before the break, when the offensive linemen pull from one side of the center to the other, you've got to match it. you got to get to a body over on that same side, and that was not done on either of those touchdown runs. Here's the kickoff from Eastern. From right to left, Marky Johnson up to the five-yard line, and he makes the catch. He's running along the right hash mark. He's got some blockers, breaks a tackle at the 30, runs into a wall, and he will be taken down at about the 32-yard line. Know what's below, tap, click, or call 811 before you dig. Brought to you by Montana811.org. 
Montana State trailing 14 to seven against Eastern Washington, 8.59 to go in the first quarter. Montana State back to work for their third drive of the day. Elijah Elliott, the big run, the 45 yard scamper for a touchdown on that second possession. He's back in there now with Patterson and Thomas spread out to the left side. Snell and Alston to the right side, the four wide receiver shotgun set on the right hash mark. Now Snell in motion, here's the snap. Malott keeps it, fires to Snell low. He got hit as he was delivering that throw. Snell had a man right on him, and it'll be an incomplete pass on first down, second and 10 for the Montana State 32. Yeah, some edge pressure there. Really combated and threw off the timing for that play action. They again tried to get Snell right into the flat as they've done so many times before, but that pressure got to Tommy before he could get the ball off. Three wide receivers left. On the outside, Alston, Patterson, and uh, Thomas in that order from outside to inside. Elliott in the backfield next to Malott and the shotgun on the right hash mark for second and 10. The snap, Malott looking to throw, fires into the flat through the hands of Elijah Elliott. He had a little bit of space. That would have been a nice chunk play. It was a little bit above his shoulders, but that was right through the mitts. Yeah, just trying to get him involved in the run game. Clearly he can handle it with the ball in his hands, but Got to catch it. Look it in. That just sailed right through his hands. Would have been a little bit of a challenging catch, but you got to come up with that, help your quarterback out. So it's third and 10. Eastern Washington trying to make some noise. They're pretty close to a sellout. It was a bit of a late arriving crowd, but not a ton of open seats in front of us or behind the end zone to our left. So again, third and 10. Here's the snap out of the shotgun. Malat fires to the right sideline. Ravi Alston reaches out, makes the catch, drags the left foot. Did he have enough for the first down? Yes, first interstate bank first down. Really good throw. We saw that about uh, probably three or four plays ago in the first possession, or second possession rather. Just a simple out route. You're getting a lot of one-on-ones. That was right at the sticks. Good confident throw by Tommy and great catch by Robbie Alston. I love watching Alston, man. He is so athletic. He's just got stick him on those hands. Three wide receivers to the left side. Snell, the tight end, with his hand down on the turf on the right side. Elliott in the backfield, first and 10 from the 42-yard line, and we've got a flag on the play. Montana State moving up front. Ball start, number 68, the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. First and 15 now for Montana State. Team's got to settle down just a little bit. Now they're... Uh, pretty hyped on the road here, but they just got to settle down, get into a little bit of a rhythm, find some success. Same formation, three wide receivers left, Snell on the right side up at the line, and Elliott in the backfield on first and 15 from their own 37-yard line. Here's the snap to Malott, hands it off, Elliott runs up the middle, he's got space across the 45, breaks a tackle, and powers through across to the 50-yard line. That was a... 13-yard gain and another strong run from Elliott. Yeah, really strong run, but credit that offensive line. They washed out that entire D-line and uh, just a nice cutback uh, run there and uh, plenty of, plenty of red grass. Normally I say green grass. <laughs> plenty of red turf here today. Don't be surprised if you keep seeing them get the give to Elijah Elliott. Second and two out of the pistol, the snap. Fakes the handoff, now will toss. Elliott's got space for the first down to the left sideline outside the numbers, and he is wrapped up after another big gain into Eagle territory, just shy of the 35-yard line. First interstate bank, first down for Montana State. Yeah, another repeat play there, just that speed option. But before they get into the speed option, he presents like a zone read. It almost just stops that defensive end in his tracks, and then he proceeds into his uh uh, speed option lane and quick pitch with his left hand and gets out on the edge and the perimeter quickly. Really nice play design, nice run by Elijah Elliott. Montana State trailing 14 to seven with the ball, seven minutes to go and running in the first quarter. Montana State up to the 37 yard line of the Eagles in a pistol formation on the left hash, hash mark. Here's the snap, Malott fakes the handoff, rolls out. He will fire to the sideline, caught by Elliott at the first down marker and he tiptoes along the sideline and is shoved out of bounds after another first down. Boy, Tommy Malott had to go through a lot of reads there and uh, the Bobcats get a first interstate bank first down. I was gonna say, credit the young quarterback. We forget that Tommy's a, he is yeah. a young quarterback but he went to his third read. That was a play action, three receiver route. He looked at the over route, uh, looked at the, the outside route, and then came back to that third option and finds him. That's a really nice progression for the young quarterback. 
Elliott had a ball through his hands earlier, but makes a nice catch there. And as he kind of gets into his rhythm again, he was not expected to be a starter at the beginning of the year, but he has stepped up big early. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Here's the snap, hands it off, and Elliott is tackled around the waist right at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and 10, 6-10 to go in the first quarter. Montana State trailing 14-7 to against the Eagles. Yeah, that was a, a really uh, well-timed blitz there. Jaron Banks from his linebacker spot blitz off the left edge and really got into the legs of Elijah Elliott. Really nothing uh, that Elijah Elliott could have done there. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide much needed life-saving equipment to first responders across the country. That's why at Firehouse Subs, they make their subs differently because their subs can make a difference. Second and 10. One wide receiver to either side. Shotgun, snap. He will hand it off. Running up the middle and he is tackled after a two-yard gain. Try to go back to that same run. New running back in that time. Marquis e. Johnson. Yeah, Marquis e. Johnson. He doesn't exactly have the same amount of weight to throw around as a, an Elijah Elliott does. Uh, he's an explosive player, but a little bit undersized. But look to see more of him getting touches from the running back position as we've mentioned over and over again, MSU's depleted at that spot. Third and eight from the 20-yard line, right on the edge of the Rosauer's red zone. Empty backfield. Two wide receivers left, including the running back, Elliott. Three to the right, including the tight end, Snell. Now the snap, Malott looking to throw. He's pressured, fires deep toward the end zone, and out of bounds. It'll be fourth down from the 20-yard line, and Montana State will bring the kicking unit out. They will attempt a 37-yard field goal. Yeah, that was another pressure by that defense. Really got home, and Tommy took another shot. I think it was from his uh, the cornerback position. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, Jones there, Marlon Jones from his cornerback spot. Really nice time blitz. Lesnar will line it up with Lighton ready to hold. Here's the snap from Sullivan. The hold is down. The kick is a line drive kick, and it is through and good. Field goal is through for Blake Glessner, and Montana State gets a couple points back on the board. They trail. 14 to 10 with 4.43 to go in the first quarter, but we do have a flag on the play. Well, let's see what this is. The officials discussing things around the 25 yard line. The field goal is good. After the play, personal foul, late hit, number 58 of the kicking team. That can be carried over on the kickoff. So a mistake for Montana State. Yeah, Aaron Richards, he's the uh, the reserve offensive lineman out of Butte. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be unfortunate. Is now you've you've got a strong leg kicker, but you're you're now forcing your kickoff cover team to go uh, earn their paychecks here, and they got to go down and cover as they're going to be backed up. And uh, you never like to see those penalties. Hate giving up free yards. Well, let's see if Glessner can really show off that leg again. Coming in, he had 23 kickoffs, 18 touchbacks to start the year, and he just booted a 37-yard field goal to make it a 14-10 game. Eastern in front, 4.43 to go in the first quarter. Now Glessner will line it up from his own 20 for this kickoff this time. The uh, return man, Chisholm, is at about the 10-yard line for Eastern Washington over on the right hash mark. Lesnar sets it up, everybody in position, checks both sides, and now ready to go. Right-footed kick toward that left hash mark. It is caught at the 12-yard line. Chisholm running along the numbers, gets a little bit of space, and then tackled immediately at the 30-yard line. Boy, that was a nice tackle right at that 30-yard line. Yeah, nice tackle by Jory Choate from his, his uh, kickoff spot there. Really good hustle, good job by that unit. Getting him down, all things considered, you know, kicking from a hole there. Bobcat fans, when you buy Bobcat products at the MSU Bookstore, you help lower the price of course material for Montana State students. Shop online at Bobcat Stadium or on campus. The MSU Bookstore is your Bobcat gear headquarters. Eastern Washington takes over at their own 30-yard line, 4.38 to go in the first quarter. Eagles leading 14-10. to 10. Here's the snap to Talkington, looking to throw. Fires into the flat on the right side, caught by Smith, and he is shoved out of bounds immediately over on that right sideline after a five-yard gain. Nice coverage downfield, really had to wor work through his progression. I was going to say the same thing. Good coverage there by the linebackers and the safeties. Have to go. He has to go to a safety valve, and that running back 
And good tackle there by Kendrick Bailey in space, getting him out of bounds, bringing up a second and five. One wide receiver to the right, two to the left. Here's the snap. He will hand it off. Smith running left, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Wow, Montana State. I think that was Callahan O'Reilly who put a hat on him. Yeah, good run fits there. That one looked a little bit more Bobcat defense-esque, and, and uh, no run in lanes. Really good job by the defensive line, coming downhill by the linebackers. Going to need to see more of that. They want to try and stop the run this Bobcat defense does, make Talkington beat you, and uh, try and get pressure on the quarterback. Third and five, trips to the right, halfback next to Talkington. Here's the snap from the 35-yard line. He fires deep down the right sideline, overthrows his man looking for Chisholm. He had a little bit of space over there, but it was just a bit too far. Yeah, that really was designed to get a, it's a one-on-one, -on -one. it's a slot fade. You're trying to get a matchup where you like uh, a guaranteed one-on-one. -on -one. He had a step there on Drew Polidor, but Credit to uh, the defense, finding a way to get off the field. Taco Dowler now back to return the punt. So Eastern Washington uh, ready to boot it away. Nick Kocic ready to go, and we've got a flag. Let's see what we got. Ball start, number 31, in the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Demetrius Crosby from his gunner's position. Really eager to get downfield, try and tackle that returner. A little too early. Montana State has touchdown returns in each of the last two weeks. Taco Dollar two weeks ago. Marquis Johnson last week against Oregon State. First punt here for Eastern Washington on fourth and ten. 3.45 to go in the first. Here's the snap and the right-footed kick toward the right hash mark. Taco Dollar slips at the 25. He'll let it bounce around, and it'll end up at about the 20-yard line. Not really that big a deal. He would have had a little bit of space over there, but in the end, it didn't really hurt Montana State too bad. Yeah, it was a line drive punt. Would have been a tough one to field there, but he ended up slipping. I know Coach Udy's talking to him. Coach Udy's talking to him there. Not sure what he's wanting to try and get him to do, but fortunate that he didn't fall and that ball didn't hit him. Yeah. See every pulse-pounding, buzzer-beating play in astounding detail with a patient experience that's second to none. Experienced doctors and advanced technology. Vance Thompson Vision, the official LASIK and cataract surgeon of the Bobcats, is your place for laser vision correction. Learn more at VanceThompsonVision.com. Montana State takes over at their own 20-yard line. Three minutes, 33 seconds to go in the first. Montana State trailing 14 to 10. Sean Chambers back there as the running back next to Tommy Malott. Takes the snap, hands it off for Chambers. He's got space in the middle, and he gets up to the 30-yard line. Bulls over a man and is finally taken down after a 12-yard gain. I mean, listen. There's not very often you see a running back or a quarterback like Sean Chambers back there taking a tailback give. I, I, I'm impressed though. I think it keeps that defense honest. Uh, you know, they they've had a lot of plays off of plays these first couple of weeks, and and uh, you know Sean Chambers hasn't really been in the tailback position, take getting carries, but clearly they're using that creativity. I like what they're doing. That's a first interstate bank first down up to the 32-yard line. MSU in their own territory. Chambers back as the running back again. Now they shuffle. Malott in as the running back. Chambers takes the snap. He fakes the handoff, and he is tackled almost immediately. Boy, somebody got pushed back over there on the left side of the line. Yeah, that was a nice play on the edge there. Held that ball, Sean Chambers did, maybe just for a fraction of a second too long. Also had an opportunity to step in the pocket, just step up in the pocket just a touch. But uh, nothing doing there, bringing up a second and long. Montana State down 14 to 10. 2.28 to go in the first quarter. Malott back in with uh, Elliott as the halfback on the right hash mark. Second and 16 from their own 26 yard line. Big play here. Snap to Malott. He will keep it running wide open in the middle. He's got a first down and slides down at the 40. He got hit as he was sliding in. There's a little bit of a tussle there. Boy, he he gave himself up. That was a baseball slide, and Malat is down and hurt. Uh, I'm shocked there was not a flag there, and Malat is hurt. He was sliding. That was a feet-first slide. He was giving himself up, and somebody came in crown first, and Malat is on his back getting checked out. How was there not a flag on that play? I, I don't know, that, but they're going to review this thing, and I bet it's going to happen if I had to guess. But then again, I don't know if they can. If they didn't throw a flag to begin with, maybe they can't. But that, yeah, that, that was a late. He was down. Yeah, he, he, he was, was already down. He was giving himself up. In, in a day and age when they, they really are, they're protecting those quarterbacks. 
This is uh, uh, he's not moving. This no. doesn't look good. This is a, a serious situation for Tommy Malott. He is on his back, being inspected now. Brent Vegan walking out as well. Uh, it was a. Uh, a run by Malott up the middle. He was doing the smart thing. He had picked up a chunk of yards. He slid feet first. He had given himself up. He was down on the ground, and a black hat on the eastern side came in, and they popped him. There was no flag on the play, but there obviously should have been, and uh, hopefully he's going to be okay, but this isn't looking good, Dan. Yeah, there was actually two guys that uh, kind of sandwiched him as he did slide feet first and uh, for sure was giving himself up, said, hey, I'm, I'm done, and those guys that still jumped on, so... I don't understand that not that was not a flag. Uh, this is uh, this is not a good situation. They've removed the face mask from his helmet, so they unscrewed that, and he continues to lay on his back now, discussing things. I, I don't know if he's talking, but uh, the trainers are down there right now. I mean, you know, this is uh, uh, a tough situation. I mean, you don't want to see anybody hurt. Well, again, Malat wasn't doing anything extra there. Brent Vegan uh, standing there chatting uh, over. Over Malad as he continues to get inspected at about the 40-yard line, and man, this is a, a, a painful play for Malad. Yeah, and you, you can't help but okay. Now you think about it, just from the football side, your coach Vegan, and um, gosh, what what's next from the quarterback position? You look at it, and that's a, that's a challenge. Um, uh, yeah, Sean Chambers. Um, I mean, then you look at the rushing attack as well, with as much as Tommy does. Regardless, I just hope he's okay. He's still pretty motionless down there. Yeah, he's just uh, laying on his back. and I mean, kind of luckily he was sliding like that and his was on his back, so they didn't have to turn him over. They've taken the mask off of his helmet, and they are going to go to break here momentarily. They have not uh, signaled it yet, but the uh, timeout operator is on the field, so it does look like they're going to go to a timeout in a moment. All of Montana State is down on knee on the far sideline. All right. We're going to take a break. This is a Bozeman Health Injury timeout. Tommy Malott down on his back being inspected after a hard hit. Two minutes, seven seconds to go in the to 10 against Eastern Washington. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Back in Cheney, Washington, after a fairly serious situation here, Montana State trailing it 14 to 10 against Eastern Washington. 2.07 to go in the first quarter. Tommy Malott down and injured. Uh, he was down on his back. They have removed the uh, face mask from his helmet. He has now sat up. He was la lying there motionless for quite some time, but we did see his feet move. He is now being helped up on his feet. <laughs> Trainers have their arms underneath kind of his shoulder. Everybody was down on a knee. Now they're all kind of coming by. Malat uh, walking very gingerly here, being helped off the field by now a couple of teammates. He's not coming back in this game. It was a play in which he ran up the middle, slid feet first. It was a cheap shot. He was sliding feet first. He was down on the ground, and two guys came in and hit him hard, and it appeared he lost consciousness there. There was no flag on the play, which is a shocking mistake by the officials. You absolutely have to throw a flag in that scenario. Yeah, you, you do, and, and really in a day and age when 
uh, man, they, they throw so many flags for contact to the head and and uh, and, and rightfully so. But I, I just I'm at a loss for words. That's I, that's I, why they throw so many flags that, to protect yeah, plays that, specifically like that. That's the whole point. And they completely missed it, and they didn't go back. There's no correction on it. And Montana State goes back to work. Sean Chambers is now the Bobcat quarterback on third and five from their own 37-yard line with an empty backfield. Left, uh, one wide receiver to the left side in motion. That's Johnson. Chambers takes the snap. He runs up the middle. He gets near the first down marker. He busts through the line. He's got a first interstate bank first down up to the 46-yard line. Nice run by Sean Chambers. So <clears throat> we get the, the opportunity to, to now discuss, okay, what's next from an offense, right? And and I look for this Montana State defense, uh, and, and quite frankly, they have to. They have to take the, the game over with the run game. The, uh, Sean Chambers is, a, you know, an able passer, and uh, they'll keep him honest with some throws. But what they're going to have to do is really control this football game with, with a running style, have the offensive line control the football. Uh, he's going to have to have quite a few carries. So don't be surprised if they try and shorten this game, put it into a phone booth, and uh, really have a run, run focused offense, even more so than usual. And uh, one of the defensive tackles for Eastern Washington lost his helmet. He's got a towel to his face right now and is walking off. Montana State with a first down, 135 to go in the first quarter, trailing 14 to 10. Boy, what an injury riddled start to this season on the offensive side to the ball for Montana State. Tommy Mallott presumably out here for the rest of the game, and who knows for how long after that. Here's the snap. Chambers fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Deep ball down the right sideline for Willie P. Just out of his reach, and a flag comes in. I don't think the cornerback ever turned around. Eastern's going to argue that it was an uncatchable ball, but he was uh, kind of impeded by the cornerback. Yeah, and they're taking a shot. That was a double move, a hitch and go. Pass interference, number seven of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, that was a simple hitch and go, max protection, and uh, they were going to go one place with that football right there. And fortunate to get the, the, the flag and a first down. So Montana State into Eagle territory up to the 39-yard line for first and 10, a first interstate bank first down. I'm Keaton Gologli alongside uh, Mikey Ryder up in the first interstate bank broadcast booth. Sean Chambers in at quarterback. Two wide receivers to the right side, one half back to his left. Chambers steps up to the line, calls out the protection, turns around, and he wants to call a timeout. A timeout from Sean Chambers. And uh, again, this is going to be a tough situation here for Montana State. Mikey, let's just go ahead and kind of recap where Montana State is on the offensive side. So you go back to the start of the year. We knew Isaiah Fonse wasn't going to be here for the, the first month or two. Uh, uh, it was uh, Kagan Williams who came over from San Diego State. He's got a neck injury out for the year. Lane Sumner, that great debut, but he gets hurt. Might be back next week after the elbow injury. Jared White, one carry, out for the year after an awkward tackle. Now it's up to Elijah White. And then today, after a cheap shot, Tommy Malat goes down with a head injury. He's on the sideline. We will not anticipate him coming back today. And the question now is how long will he be out? And it's up to Sean Chambers to run the show. Yeah, and what does that do to your playbook? Uh, if you're Taylor Housewright trying to call offensive plays, um, what is the you know the game plan here? And so this is a, a bout of adversity after adversity and we'll see how they respond. Montana State down 14 to 10, 118 to go in the first quarter from the Eagle 39 yard line. Here's the snap, Chambers hands it off, running to the right tackle, Marquis Johnson spins into the line and he's able to pick up a, a nice gain of seven yards. It'll be second and three. Again, we keep talking about how electric he is. When he has the ball and he finds a little bit of a crease, man, he can go. And uh, he is undersized, so he does, you don't want him running a whole heck of a lot in between the tackles, but he's going to get a whole lot of carries as the uh, the running back room, and now with Tommy out, um, even more depleted, look for these guys to step up. That's a pretty good-looking fifth-string running back. Uh, you got to credit this uh, coaching staff for bringing in that kind of depth. And now Montana State brings in R.J. Fitzgerald standing next to Chambers. Patterson shuffles in along the line. Here's the snap. Chambers shoved out of pressure outside the hash mark on the left side, angling toward the sideline and a stiff arm as he goes out of bounds. He just shoved a quarterback to the ground. Certainly there's some frustration on the Montana State side. After a short gain, it'll be third and four for Montana State. 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah, and Sean is a big guy, right? And he kind of gets somebody on skates and uses a stiff arm to, to throw him into the sideline. 
Uh, what they really would have liked is to have Fitzgerald kind of stick on his block there. He could have cut inside and get and move the chains, but here we are, third and three, trying to move the sticks. Is that looks like that's going to be quarter. Yep, they're going to let this thing run out to the end of the first quarter. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you. As part of the Toyota rewards program, you can win exclusive swag throughout the year, along with receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle in to be serviced at your local Montana Toyota dealers. To join the program, visit msubobcats.com slash Toyota Rewards to register. Toyota, proud to be a partner of Bobcat Athletics. We head to the second quarter, Montana State with a football in Eagles territory with a third down coming up. Montana State trailing 14 to 10 against Eastern Washington. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Montana State trailing 14 to 10 against Eastern Washington as we prepare for the second quarter. Montana State with a third and three coming up from the Eagle 32 yard line. Dan, down on the sidelines, what'd you see in that first quarter? Yeah, a lot of scoring, a lot of uh, <laughs> big plays by both teams and uh, it's kind of a blow by blow, punch by punch for scoring for each team. It's gonna be a, really important for Montana State to get some points out of this possession. What are you hoping to see from uh, Sean Chambers here as we move forward now that he, he's the starting quarterback, he's the 1A guy now? Well, you, Sean Chambers has got a lot of snaps under his belt, whether he was at Wyoming or, or at times here, obviously, but uh, he, he's not gonna be uh, overwhelmed by the, the, the bright lights or the red turf or anything here. He's played a lot, and uh, now it's up to him to, to lead this football team and get out of Cheney with a whip victory. Mikey? I, I think Sean is, is a guy that, is, like Dan mentioned, has played a ton of football. He's got a little bit of that gamer in him. Yeah. You know, I think if uh, this may even suit him a little bit better as he, he gets an opportunity to get into more of a rhythm. Because right now he's been utilized as a short yardage kind of running back, wildcat quarterback. But now you give him the opportunity to get the ball in his hands every single snap. Be interesting to see how he responds. Yeah, it's not, not unlike a, you know, a running back. He wants the ball all the time when he's in a win a rhythm now he knows he's the guy yep so it's gonna take a little bit of pressure off my thing yeah yeah no, he just got to be smart with the football in the pass game get you the town pump quarter stats in just a moment first a huge third down montana state in eagle territory at their 32 yard line third and three trailing 14 to 10 on the first play of the second quarter chambers in out of the shotgun with R.J. Fitzgerald off his left hip. Two wide receivers to the right side. Here's the snap. He runs right up the middle. A little bit of patience. Hits the linebacker. He keeps chugging forward right up to the marker, and he has got it. First interstate bank, first down after a four- or five-yard gain. Yeah, good job by the offensive line. Getting a good push, and then smartly the guys behind him helping it, pushing the pile. And Sean Chambers is a big guy. He's got a big frame that he can push forward doing anything he can to move the chains. So first and 10 from the 28 yard line of the Eagles. Montana State down 14 to 10, 14.30 to go in the second quarter. 
Chambers on the left, hash mark out of the shotgun. Here's a man in motion, Patterson from right to left. He takes the handoff, runs left along the numbers, cuts back right, and he is tripped up just inside the 15-yard line. Another first interstate bank first down as Montana State gets into the Rose Hours red zone. Hey, R.J. Fitzgerald, what a block on the edge. Gets a seal block, really pancakes his guy. The Dillon native just doing his job. Scrappy at fullback spot. is nothing flashy about it. And he is uh, hes an athletic fullback too, but he's so tough and a willing blocker. From a walk-on to a captain to wearing the legacy number 41, Fitzgerald out of the right side of the line, now shuffles back into the shotgun formation next to Chambers. Patterson in motion from left to right. Here's the snap. It's handed off to Fitzgerald. Up the middle, inside the five. Fitzgerald into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. First career touchdown for R.J. Fitzgerald. And Montana State has the lead early in the second quarter. Come on, who doesn't like to see a fullback uh, get into the end zone, but I'll tell you, that wasn't like a, a simple dive on the two-yard no. line to get in. He he actually made a nifty move, a little cutback, uh, a half-hurdle type thing, and, <laughs> and uh, keeps his feet and look quick and athletic. There I was talking up his blocking ability, but he's, he's an athletic guy back there at fullback. A 13-yard touchdown run, and man, the Bobcat fans out of the opposite side giving him a hero's welcome as he deserves. Here's the snap, the kick, and the PAT is good. I mean, there's a lot of gold jerseys over on that opposite side of the field. Fitzgerald just kind of went over and acknowledged them, and he got a heck of an ovation. Yeah, what a special drive. All things considered, you think about the adversity that they just faced with uh, losing your starting quarterback on that on, drive uh, on that drive on top of what they've already experienced here throughout these first three games and uh yeah credit sean chambers stepping in there not flinching finding a way to move the chains on a pivotal third and five and then just a bunch of unselfish football and uh a lot of blocking downfield and then credit coach taylor house right giving a, a a nice game plan there and going to the well with uh, what he knew would work and that's a really nice drive Town pump touchdown for R.J. Fitzgerald, busting it in from 13 yards out. Quick check of the town pump stats from that first quarter. A little bit different now after a couple of those rushes, but Montana State had 118 yards on the ground, 42 yards through the air. Eastern Washington, 96 yards on five carries and two rushing touchdowns, their first two rushing touchdowns of the season. They only had 34 yards through the air on four of five passing. So Montana State will kick it off from right to left. Here's the boot from Glessner. It is down the left hash mark toward the end zone over near the sideline that lands on the one yard line and it bounces out of bounds right at that one yard line. Kick out of bounds, kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line, first down. We haven't seen that out, out of him a, a whole lot. glester has been so clutch, but those are the yards in these games you just you can't give up and they're, they're free yards and you find yourself in a, a shootout of sorts and uh, you don't want to be giving up free yards. That's going to be a Kind of an earful there from Coach Vegan. I can see it giving it to him. Kendall Ford Lincoln of Bozeman from sales to service. Our focus is making sure you get a great experience and a great deal. Stop by your Ford truck headquarters or visit KendallFordBozeman.com. Montana State leading 17-14 to in the opening game of the Big Sky schedule. 13.45 to go in the second quarter. Eastern Washington with a football to our left, moving from left to right. Talkington takes the snap, looking to throw. A lot of pressure, escapes pressure from Valdez, turns the corner to the numbers, fires down the sidelines, and it is caught for a first down into Bobcat Terry. Territory. Boy, just a little bit of jazz on the offensive side, and they complete a big pass to Dylan Ingram on the right sideline, the tight end for Eastern Washington. Yeah, a lot of good things happening there on the back end, and the linebackers really doing their job coverage-wise. That defensive line's got to find a way to get to the quarterback and get him down. He too much time back there. Just eluded Valdez back there, too. So into Bobcat territory after the 27-yard pass. Here's the snap. And a handoff to the, or Talkington rather, running to the left side, and he is taken down after a three yard gain. Look, he wants to pass it first. He's a pass, you know, it's a pass offense, but um, he will keep it. And we've seen him keep it a, a fair amount here in this first half just to keep that defense honest. Good job by Danny Uli Kepa staying home. He was the quarterback defender there if he kept it. Really good job playing gap sound defense by the Bobcat defense. Second and seven, here's the snap. Talkington hands it off, running up the middle, right near that first down marker, Justice Jackson going right through the middle of the line. There was a lot of space there, and it comes up one yard shy of the first down, so it'll be third and one. Yeah, they may go just a little bit of hurry up here. 
12.30 to go in the first half. Montana State leading 17 to 14. Eastern Washington up to the Bobcat 29 yard line. Here's the snap, Talkington hands it off. Justice right up the middle, stopped right at about the line of scrimmage, but he got it, only needed a yard and he got it. A first down for Eastern Washington up to the 27 yard line. Yeah, just a downhill zone play, nothing fancy. Finds a way to get that one yard, it was close. Alston and Brott in to spell on the line with Schmidt and uh, Greeby going to the sideline. Valdez still right there in the thick of things. Eastern Washington setting it up with a first and 10, 12 minutes to go in the first half. Talkington takes the snap, hands it off, running right. He's tripped up. Ooh, there was a lot of space there. And uh, Silas Perea just got tripped up around the line of scrimmage, was able to fall forward for about a five yard gain. Again, they, they came back to that same play. They end up pulling two guys to the short field and the, the Bobcat D has not matched it guy for guy. They were short. He, he, he literally tripped over his own feet or a guy and they're lucky that happened. Second and five, the snap out of the shotgun, hands off again. He runs left and is taken down at the 19 yard line. Silas uh, Perea again. And, I mean, Montana, or Eastern Washington right now is averaging about 12 yards per carry at the start of this game. They've had some big games. Yeah, and this is a defense that prides themselves on stopping the run. They've got to anchor down here. This will be a really good opportunity to do that. Third and short, let's stay gap disciplined, play with good eyes, find a way to get off the field. Here's the snap. Hands it off, running up the middle. He is taken down right away in the backfield. Nolan Askelson is there to take down the running back right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, great stop, playing downhill. Nolan's a productive player. Good job holding on to a big back around his legs, forcing a fourth down. Looks like these Eagles are gonna go for it. Fourth and two from the Bobcat 19 yard line. 10.25 to go in the first half of the clock running. Bobcats up 17 to 14. Here's the snap, Talkington hands it off, running left, dives forward, and he is right at the marker. And it is a first down for Eastern Washington. They convert on fourth and two. And you get to this point in the series, and these guys have played a lot. And uh, you get tired. I see some hands on the hips there. Haven't seen a whole lot of subbing this series. See if they can anchor down here. Try and get off the field, force a field goal. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half. Montana State leading 17 to 14. Here's the snap out of the shotgun. Talkington dances out of trouble, and he is sacked back at the 30-yard line. Ben Seymour there to wrap him up. First sack of the game for Montana State. Yeah, really good job. That's a true drop back pass. There's some one-on-ones there on the edges. Both Seymour and uh, Brody Greeby burning the edge, getting a much needed sack. That's the first one. And in a couple games and they've needed that for their confidence and then it puts it into a real second long situation. 10 sacks in the first two games, zero sacks last week against Oregon State. That's the first of the day coming from Seymour. He's got one and a half this year. Now second and 22. Snap to Talkington out of the shotgun, looking to throw. Fires to the left side, incomplete, and a flag. Polidor got a little bit tangled up. I think their feet just got a little tangled up with the receiver and a flag is down up near the 25 yard line. Yeah, and he got fairly aggressive Pass there. Pass interference, number two of the defense. Ball he placed at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. And he was in really good position, truly, um, in, a, you know, in a trail technique, but uh, ended up just getting pretty handsy, and then he had one grab, and then also got their feet tangled up, and that's gonna get a flag every time. First and 10, boy, so it was second and long. Now first and 10 from the 17-yard line for Eastern Washington. Here's the snap, hands it off, running left. Cuts back up the numbers. He is hit out of the bounds near the first down marker, but there's another flag on the play near the line of scrimmage. I think they might get MSU for an illegal cut block as an offensive lineman was coming out there. And on the corner, he ends up cutting him down. I think they're trying to get that out of the game as well. We'll see what they call. Here's the call. Personal foul, block below the waist. Number four, the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Two crucial penalties by the Bobcat defense. Yeah, and those are things that I'm not sure what you tell a corner. I guess when, when I was playing, that's exactly what you were taught to do. Um, 
because you can't go one on one. It's a corner versus an offensive lineman, and uh, that's a tough situation to be in. But I understand what they're trying to do: get that out of the out of the game of football. See if this Bobcat defense can just saddle up, dig in their heels a little bit. A lot of adversity this drive. Looking for small business support from IT and accounting to recruiting and marketing? Cosentis offers a wide range of business services to optimize your growth. Check them out at Cosentis.com. Mitchell's talking about something here with first and goal to go coming up from the eight-yard line with nine minutes to go in the first half. Montana State leading 17 to 14. Here's an explanation, it appears. And we're going to get something here. Correction, the end of the run was the eight-yard line. It'll be enforced half the distance from the end of the run. First down. So it puts them up at the four-yard line, first and goal. Again, from the four-yard line, and let's see if this Montana State defense can come up with a big stop. They're up 17-14, to 9.02 to go in the first half. Pistol formation, man in motion from left to right. Here's the snap, talking to bootlegs out to the right, plants, fires, wide open, caught. Touchdown right in the middle of the end zone. Efton Chisholm, that's the easiest touchdown catch he'll have of his career. Yeah, a lot of misdirection there. It's a play action, and uh, he just kind of snuck himself on a little bit of an over route and kicked his way through a little bit of traffic and was standing there wide open in the back of the end zone. How would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to syncmygame.com to find out how. So Eastern Washington retaking the lead. A couple of lead changes already in this ball game, and the PAT is due. Montana State at the moment trailing 20 to 17, 8.50 to go in the second quarter, pending the PAT, the snap, the hold, the kick, and that is up and good. So 21-17 Eagles. We'll take a break, 8.50 to go in the second quarter. Eastern Washington, 21, Montana State, 17. This is... Serving all your garage door needs, DoorTech is raising the door on quality. Montana State trailing 21-17 on the Inferno at Roos Field in Cheney, Washington against Eastern Washington with 8.50 to go in the first half. And Mikey, man, it, it feels like we've played half the Big Sky schedule in the first quarter and a half today. Yeah, it seems that way. There hasn't really been a lot of, like, settling in. I, I don't know if it was the injuries or, um, you know, plus the – uh, you know, the high scoring affair that it's been, but it just feels to be uh, unsettled a little bit here in this first half. Tommy Millan out today. He got hit. 
and uh, appeared to lose consciousness, so we assume he's going to be out for the rest of the game and to, uh, to be determined as things move forward. So Sean Chambers, the A1 quarterback now, moving forward for Montana State, and he already helped out orchestrate a touchdown drive. Eastern Washington kicking it away after a score to take their second lead of the day. It's caught by Marquis Johnson on the right side of the five-yard line. Running along the numbers, gets through the first wave of tacklers, cuts back left, and he dives forward near the 40-yard line, just shy, and that's where Montana State will take over. I love watching Marquis Johnson run. Yeah, I was about to say, there's just some guys back there that have a, I mean, they have such a good feel for it, and they can find those little creases, and he's one of those guys very comfortable in the return game. Did you know that Mountain Hot Tub was voted Hot Tub Dealer of the Year for the best service after the sale since 1979? Visit Mountain Hot Tub at Gooch Hill and Huffine. Montana State taking over officially at their own 37-yard line on a pistol formation with Sean Chambers in at quarterback. One wide receiver to the right, two to the left. Here's the snap, hands it off. Elliott runs right, cuts back left. He's near the first down marker and spins forward for a nine-yard gain. A beautiful run for Elijah Elliott. You know, he's touched the ball, I think, four times, and it, it's been very productive all four times. I'm a little surprised they haven't continued to just stick with him um, and give him a little bit more carries because he's been awfully productive early on. Six carries, 93 yards, and a touchdown for Elijah Elliott. R.J. Fitzgerald, the other rushing touchdown for Montana State. Pistol formation of the right hash mark. Here's the snap, hands off. Elliott bowls forward, and he has a one-yard gain, which is all he needed. Uh, first interstate bank, first down for Montana State. Yeah, fortunate uh, to get the first down there that they had a blitz from one of their outside linebackers slash safety. This Eastern defense is playing in a 4-2-5, so they got five uh, secondary guys out there all the time, but they had an edge pressure there uh, right to where we were trying to run it. And Elijah Elliott does a good job of just knifing and getting vertical and knowing where the chain or the uh, the first down marker is and doing a good job moving the sticks, bringing up a first down. 7.45 to go in the first half, running clock. Montana State trailing 21-17 at Eastern Washington. Man in motion from right to left. Here's the snap. Chambers keeps it. Now fires into the backfield. Thomas makes the catch, and he is tripped up after a four-yard gain. Now, all things considered, there was a lot of pressure there. There is a flag on the field, but Montana State still moving forward here. I'm not sure what the penalty is there. He didn't get a line across the line of scrimmage. He actually threw that ball backwards to Thomas, but Aaron Best is applauding the head coach for Eastern. Personal foul, number five at the defense, hit on a defenseless player, 15-yard penalty, first down. Could have used that call when Tommy Wallach got hit earlier. Yep, like, yeah, that is it's a shame. I guess he'll he'll take the yardage now, but uh, creativity there. That was a really triple option at, at its finest. He ends up uh, faking a, uh, a zone play, could give it if he wants to, pulls it. He can keep it, but then he's got a, a bubble to that side if he wants to throw it. He threw it to Cleavan Thomas. A lot of elements there on that play. 7-10 to go in the first half. Montana State trailing 21-17 with the football. First and 10 from the left hash mark on the 35-yard line. Here's the snap. Chambers running up the middle. He's got space inside the 20. He's dragging a defender and is finally hit at the 5. Ball is loose. Flag is on the field as Montana State is deep right up near the goal line. It is Montana State football. Yeah, that's gonna be a targeting penalty there and he's gonna be ejected. That looked like a, a crown of the helmet, pretty easy call there. Sean Chambers loses a helmet. I could be wrong, but I'd be shocked, we'll see. He, uh, Sean Chambers was kind of getting held up. He was dragging a man. I mean, he dragged the guy three, four yards, so he got a little held up there, and somebody came in. And Chambers doesn't have his helmet on here, so he might even have to come off on this play, but we'll see. And look, you have got to be throwing these flags. If you don't throw the flag against uh, on that hit against Malott earlier, that's when things start to escalate. Yeah, they really do. And this is, look, this is a rivalry. These teams don't like each other. This is how it works. And uh, you can feel the emotions. Even up here in the booth, it's physical. Personal foul with targeting, number four of the defense. Half the distance to the goal, the automatic first down. The previous play is under review. So that's Anthony Smith, and that's a guy who is one of their leaders. He actually wears their legacy number. He's a redshirt senior from Everett, Washington. I can see a little bit of one of the replays here up in the booth, and you know he was getting held up, and he came in, and he did. He went crown of the helmet right to the chest of Chambers and hit him in the chest, so it wasn't quite the face, but it did look like he was going helmet first. Yeah, and they're, they're still going to get you for that, just leading with your helmet. But we'll see what they come up with. And I, you know, with Sean Chambers' helmet coming off, and there's a penalty. Yeah, 
I don't believe he's got to exit the game. No, that, it negates it, I believe. Uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as it looked live. He did kind of turn a little bit to try to get the shoulder to the chest, and he was below the jaw, so it wasn't to the face mask of Chambers. And it was tough because Chambers was kind of a, a sitting duck. He was all tied up there. Yeah, absolutely. It, we'll see what they uh, what they rule here, but it was a little bit closer than it, it looked live. Montana Farm Bureau, the grassroots voice of agriculture, advocating for farmers and ranchers across our state and leading Montana toward a future with a prosperous agricultural economy and thriving rural communities. Join us at mfbf.org. After and go review, Bobcats. there is no foul for targeting. The result of the play is a Montana State first down. I think that's probably the right call. Yep, I think you're right. Uh, yeah, you're after right. you looked at it, you could see he did turn, so I think it was eventually the shoulder into the chest of Chambers. So on the flip side, you know, yeah. you're, you're now Coach Vegan and you got down one quarterback and you, you got to be smart. And I'm sure he's telling the same thing to Sean Chambers. Say, I, I love your energy. I love your effort here. But we got to be smart. Slide when possible. Protect yourself. So I think they, they were going to make Sean Chambers leave the game. I think Montana State takes a timeout. I think that negates that as well. Yep. Uh, I think, are they taking a timeout on the field here? I believe they are. No, right. they're keeping it here. Yeah, they're keeping it here on the field. But Montana State using a timeout with 6.56 to go in the first, or excuse me, the second quarter. Tra uh, trailing 21-17, but they'll have first and goal to go from the five-yard line. And Montana State trying to punch this thing in here. Close, uh, high-octane rivalry game. Man, this is everything you expect Big Sky play to bring to this level of play. Yeah, absolutely. This is a rival lot of intensity you can feel it up here this is a pivotal down let's see if we can punch it in here chambers into the shotgun alston to the left side patterson to the right rj fitzgerald just off the left hip of the tight end Derek snell pickering the other tight end on the line over on the right side right in the middle of the field first and goal from the five fitzgerald moves back into a shotgun Patterson motions, here's the snap, fires to the right side, caught, Willie P, TD, wide open over on the right side. He came in in motion, stopped, turned back, went to the right sideline. He was left all by himself, and Montana State retakes the lead up 23-21 with 6.51 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, great play design. It's a packed box. They really are in, in uh, you know, 22 personnel. There's only one receiver out there and uh, they, they motion him in, and then quickly on the snap, he outflanks that, that secondary guy, gets on the edge, pretty easy throw for Sean Chambers. Really good play call, Taylor House right. Here's the snap from Sullivan. Lighton gets it down, a bit of a high snap. Glessner puts it right through the middle of the uprights to complete the PAT and take us to a timeout. Montana State leading 24-21 against Eastern Washington in a back-and-forth slugfest between these two Big Sky rivals. 6.51 to go in the first half. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. We are late 
in the second quarter, 6.51 to go in this first half. This game is brought to you by Montana State Fund, covering Montana's workers with workers' comp and safety know-how. Workplace safety, you're naked without it. More at safemt.com. Montana State pushing across another town pump touchdown. A little bit of uh, trickery from Montana State. Willie Patterson with another touchdown reception. Third passing it touchdown for uh, Sean Chambers this year with Montana State. How would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how. Also, Kendall Ford Lincoln of Bozeman, your Ford truck headquarters from F-Series trucks to Ford SUVs. We can help you find just the right Ford for your busy life. Stop by or visit KendallFordBozeman.com. Montana State will kick it away up 24-21. This has been a thrilling, grueling, rivalry type game in the first Big Sky contest of the season. Montana State won here last year, snapping a seven game losing streak against Eastern Washington. Only their third win in Cheney against Eastern Washington. Here's the kickoff deep into the end zone, caught by Chisholm near the back of the end zone, just on top of the white type A. And Nat will move the ball out to the 25 yard line. Montana's Rib and Chop House has been serving Rocky Mountain communities for over 20 years. Our ability to grow has come through our commitment to Rocky Mountain hospitality, a concept which incorporates a casual attitude with our commitment to loyalty, safety, service, and quality food. We hope you'll be our guest at one of our Montana locations soon. Eastern Washington taking over now at their own 25-yard line. First down, 6.51 to go in the first half. Bobcats leading the Eagles 24-21. Here's the snap, hands it off, running left. Justice is tripped up in the backfield. Beautiful play back there by Simeon Woodard among some other white jerseys, and a long loss that time for Eastern Washington. Yeah, really good job staying gap sound and stringing that thing laterally, forcing it to go to the sideline, and uh, gang tackling, running to the football. Really productive first down for the Bobcat D. Woodard putting together a couple of nice weeks here for Montana State on the outside. Here's the snap out of the shotgun, fires to the left side, caught, and Woodard wraps up his man right away, gets a little help from O'Reilly, and he's finally shoved out of bounds. It'll be third down and long for Eastern Washington deep in their own territory. Just a simple hitch pattern on the outside. That was a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Talkington was going to his receiver on the outside uh, the entire time. Ball came right to him. He looked right out there. He was going there the entire time. Good tight coverage by Simeon Woodard. Yeah, good hustle by O'Reilly to get over there and help clean it up as well. Here's the snap on third and long. Looking to throw, fires over the middle, caught and tackled immediately. Ball is loose, but it did come out on the ground. They're gonna say that was an incomplete pass, so never totally had it. Freddie Roberson, the intended receiver, and Eastern Washington will have to kick it away. That is a huge three and out. Yeah, huge three and out. Uh, just from a, a confidence standpoint, from a, a number of reps and and just giving yourself a little bit of opportunity to, to catch your breath. That Bobcat defense needed that stop desperately. So Eastern Washington will kick it away. Taco Dollar set up at his own 30 yard line. Here's the snap, chest high, the kick, high arching kick. Dollar flags for the fair catch and he makes the snag at the 33 yard line and that's where Montana State will take over. Join Champs New Kids Club, presented by Billings Clinic Bozeman. Your $25 membership fee gets you game tickets, Bobcat gear, and more. Sign up today at msubobcats.com slash Champs Kids Club. 5.55 to go in the first half. Montana State leading 24-21 over Eastern. Sean Chambers back in at quarterback. Tommy Malott out after a bad hit in that uh, at the end of that first quarter. So Chambers, the... A1 quarterback now with Elliott to his right. He's had a great game out of the backfield. Here's the snap, hands it off. No, actually keeps it rather, and Chambers is tackled after a three-yard gain. And one more correction, too. That was Marquis Johnson in the backfield, not Elijah Elliott, who has had a very good game. Elliott, seven carries, 94 yards so far for Montana State. And for Sean Chambers now, seven carries, 52 yards for the Cats. They're going to continue to ride this run game. I have no doubt as they try and shorten this game, like I mentioned, keep it in a phone booth. This is how they want it on the Bobcat O. They want to run the football. Second and eight from their own 35-yard line. 5.20 to go in the first half, clock running. Here's the snap, hands it off. Johnson running left, and he is stopped right at the line. No gain. Not much of a push on that left side that time. Yeah, they were filling downhill pretty hard. Those interior guys for Eastern Washington 
Josh Jerome led by him. They're, they're a stout crew down there. Brings up a third and pivotal here. I, I, I mean, you, you, you're third and eight, and so you have to give Sean Chambers an opportunity to try and throw the football here. Four See wide, what they have dialed up. Four wide receivers set. One of them is the tight end. Pickering over to the right side. Three receivers there. Here's the snap out of the shotgun. Looking to fire over the left side. Alston, back shoulder, th shoulder throw. Cannot make the catch. It's incomplete. Fourth down. And Montana State will have to punt it away. Only the second passing attempt for Chambers. The other one was the five-yard town pump touchdown score to Willie Patterson. So a pair of three and outs in what has been an offensively dominated game. Both defenses get off the field quickly. Yeah, you'd sure love to pair that three and out by the Bobcat D with a, you know, some type of drive and giving yourself a, a chance to catch your breath a little bit on defense. But nonetheless, this Bobcat D has an opportunity to force another three and out. Here's the snap and the punt. Boy, that is a booming high punt. That thing lands at the 15-yard line, bounding near the five, takes another kick, oh, into the end zone. Well, Montana State just couldn't quite get down there. That was a heck of a boot. Yeah, I, I, and I'm, I'm not sure strategy-wise um, what they're thinking there. You always want your gunners to go down there. Somebody's got to get down to the football and Holding. turn around. During the kick, number five of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, it'll be first down. Well, maybe that was part of it. Brent Beacon was livid on the left sideline, chatting up these, uh, these officials. But that'll move things back at least a little bit as Eastern Washington gets ready to take over. We'll take a break. 424 to go in the first half. Bobcats 24, Eagles 21. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Real milk is a nutrient-rich product. It contains 13 essential nutrients from vitamin A to zinc, all of which are important for a healthy immune system and overall wellness. That's 13 nutrients with seemingly endless benefits. Reach for milk and make every sip count. Montana State leading 24-21, 4.24 to go in the first half. It'll be Eastern Washington football from their own 10-yard line as uh, we Dive down toward the end of this uh, first half. And Montana State did get a three and out on that last possession. Yeah, they did. And, and I would have liked to see that Bobcat O, you know, sustain some type of drive. It just gives your defense an opportunity to catch your breath just a little bit as they've been playing quite a few plays here in this first half. But nonetheless, timely timeout here as well. This Bobcat D would love to get on Gunner Talkington. See if they can't make him uncomfortable. Interwest Moving and Storage is the official moving company of the MSU Bobcats. One sack today from the Montana State defense. And after a holding penalty on the, on the, uh, on the punt, Eastern Washington again will begin their own 10 yard line with 424 to go in the first half. Bobcats, the first game of the Big Sky Conference season, lead 24-21 in what has been a back and forth affair. 
Eagles in a pistol. Snap to Talkington. Fires over the left side. Had a bad throw. Boy, threw it way wide to Chisholm. He had a little bit of cushion with Campbell there on the coverage, but uh, a very inaccurate throw. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, that Bobcat D is fortunate that Talkington didn't look to his right. He had his tight end um, streaking down the field. Um, big target in Dylan Ingram. He's a 6'5", 245-pound senior from Camas, Washington, and he was uh, wide open. Now the snap out of the shotgun from the right hash mark. Pressure. He's in this in the uh, in the end zone. He throws it away. And uh, was he out of the pocket? Must have been. No flag on the play. Boy, big time pressure there. He got it across the line of scrimmage. He was right on the edge of that uh, of that tackle box. Yeah, that was really close. Credit that Bobcat D line getting home, making him uncomfortable. Have to do the same here on a third and ten. See if they're gonna. Let four guys rush the passer if they're going to add a fifth and a, or a sixth. Montana State did record a safety here on this field last year. Snap on third and ten. Talking to fires on a slant over the middle. Caught but quickly wrapped up after a six-yard gain. It'll be fourth and four. Nice job to wrap him up right away by the Bobcat defense and the punting unit onto the field for Eastern Washington. That's back-to-back -back three and outs. Yeah, a lot to celebrate there. Back-to-back -to -back three and outs, that's hard to do. This is a very yeah. capable offense. Really good job giving the ball back to your offense with three, three minutes and you know what will be probably 30 or, or 25 seconds until halftime to extend your lead, giving your, your offense another opportunity. Montana State leading 24-21. Eastern ready to punt it away. Taco Dollar set up at his own 40-yard line to receive. They're going to let this play clock wind down as far as they can. Now the snap, knee high. It's blocked! It's loose at the 20-yard line, still spinning around, and it's up just shy of the 35. Yeah, who else but Ty Okada, the senior captain, preseason all-conference on some All-American lists. You love to see that, a guy that not only contributes on defense, but he's not afraid to go step in on special teams. And just an effort play there, coming right up the gut. Really good job. Again, you got three minutes and 20 seconds left. Great field position for this Bobcat O. How about the roommates, Ty Okada, RJ Fitzgerald? They're roommates. They're both walk-ons who are now captains. Fitzgerald, his first career score, and Ty Okada with a punt block, and Montana State takes over at the 33-yard line of Eastern. Wow, what a play. With 3.20 to go in the first half, Montana State trying to make this a two-score game. Sean Chambers in out of the uh, shotgun formation. Robbie Alston over on the left side. Patterson on the right. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Runs right. He's got one man to beat. He shoves him off with a stiff arm. Turns the corner outside the numbers along the sideline. He's shoved out of bounds up at the five-yard line. What a run. DBs aren't going to be able to take down a guy like Sean Chambers. No, and Anthony Smith had him one-on-one, -on -one, but that is a tall order. Yeah. Uh, and he tried to tackle him a little bit up high and uh, didn't take the greatest angle, but Sean Chambers is a nice, smooth athlete out there and uh, really knocking on the doorstep here to try and extend their lead. That first interstate bank first down puts Montana State into the Rosauer's red zone. First down and goal to go from the five yard line. 2.45 left in the first half. Montana State leading 24-21. Chambers steps up to the line. Calls out the protection, now steps back with Fitzgerald as his running back. Man in motion from right to left. Here's the snap, hands it off. Fitzgerald runs right, and he gets swarmed by a number of red jerseys. That's no gain. It'll be second and goal from the five. Oh, they were one guy away there. There was a decent seam, and uh, R.J. almost slipped that tackle, but credit that defense for Eastern Washington. And it's not terrible that the clock continues to run here. Oh, a good point there, Dan, is you never want to give in Eastern Washington offense, that last possession before half. Two wide receivers to the left. Fitzgerald shuffling along the line. Here's the snap to Chambers. He's patient, runs up the middle, puts his hat down, and he is stuffed again. That's a one-yard gain. It'll be third and goal from the four. That clock continuing to wind down. Now under two minutes and still running. Yeah, he really had the option to throw it there. The old Tebow play, as they call it, as it's known. He kind of fakes like he's going to run it, and he thought about maybe throwing it, but making the decision to tuck it and keep. But by that time, he didn't have a whole lot of momentum. Big third down here. Don't be surprised if they keep it on the ground. Well, under 130 remaining in the first half. Third and goal from the four. 
Chambers out of the shotgun. Fitzgerald on his right hip. Patterson and Alston spread out to the left side. Here's the snap, keeps it, runs up the middle, chugging forward. He is just shy. Takes it up to either the one or two yard line, and there is a flag on the play on the left sideline. Illegal formation, offense. That penalty's been declined. Wilson play is fourth down. All right, what do you do here? I, I would be shocked if they don't go for it. You got two yards the clock to go. Will start on the snap. And it looks like they are going to run the kicking unit out. So it'll still be a one score game if Fontana State can execute here from the two yards out. Hey guys, just saw Tommy Malott in uh, street clothes here. Looks like he's walking really good and alert and uh, out here to cheer on his team. That's a good sign after that vicious, ugly hit earlier. So here is the uh, field goal attempt from the, with the holder at the 10 yard line, the snap, the kick, it is up and it is no good. Montana State try to take the shore points and he misses that kick a little bit to the right. Boy, that's a big miss, and now the Eagles will take over deep in their own territory at the end of the first half. Some of those kicks as you get deeper into, uh, you know, into the uh, enemy's territory, you know, it's an, actually a little bit of a tough angle for that kicker. I mean, it is a chip shot, I get that, but um, I think some of those kickers, they prefer almost a little bit more space to work with, and, and you're not working with such weird angles. So a missed field goal, officially 19 yards. Boy, that's a rare one from Blake Glessner. So the Eagles take over with 107 to go in the first half. Montana State still in front, 24-21. Here's the snap and a handoff and a run, and it's a two-yard gain, so that moves the Eagles up to the 22-yard line of their own territory. They don't seem like they're in a huge hurry here. Eastern's got three timeouts, I, I believe. Yeah, you think maybe they'd have a little more urgency. Now they do have three timeouts. Here's the snap out of the shotgun. Talkington looking to throw. Fires uh, across the middle. It's caught, and he is tackled at the 25-yard line with the clock continuing to run. That was Dylan Ingram, the tight end. Yeah, good tackle by Ty Okada. Wisely getting in on his legs. That's a big target in Dylan Ingram. Ty's using that wrestling background. He's smart. Really good tackle. Keeping him in bounds. Clock's running. Not using their three timeouts. 18, 17 seconds left in this first half. Talkington just kind of standing straight up here on the left hash mark in a shotgun formation. Yeah, Coach Best just gave him the hold signal. Yeah. They're sure. going to let this sucker run out. So that's how this uh, first half, eventful first half, will come to a close. Triple zeros, and the first half is over. A back-and-forth affair. Montana State trailed after one quarter of play, same as they did here last season, but they've got the lead heading into halftime. Tommy Malott out with an injury after he was hit uh, in the at the end of the first quarter, Montana State would still turn that into a scoring drive, but Malat is out today. Looked like a head injury. He was a little wobbly coming off, so we don't want to speculate too much, but he's definitely not coming back in, as Dan mentioned. He will grab uh, Brent Vegan here momentarily with Montana State leading 24-21 at halftime. Dan Davies is uh, down to the sideline, or down in the end zone now, and will grab uh, Brent Vegan here. Coach, what started out like a track meet, your defense really stepped up there in that second quarter. Yeah, you know, we really had to. Uh, the, those first two drives, that's not Bobcat defense. I mean, they're running the ball on us like they were. And, and, you know, I think it's just calming down, uh, understanding it's a long game, playing assignments on football and tackling it. You know, and, and um, we did we did see a couple stops there at the end, and we got to continue that. And a great uh, punt block, just couldn't capitalize on that good field position. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Big time special teams play turns into nothing. Um, you know, we're in a dog fight, obviously, here. Uh, guys are guys are fighting, but but we got to make enough plays to obviously end up on the right side of this. Sean Chambers stepped up there right there with Tommy going out. You got to be proud of him. Yeah, yeah, we'll need Sean to uh, make, make some plays both in the run game and the pass game. He's more than capable of doing that. Great. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Bye. Guys, back to you. Dan Davies with Brent Vegan. You heard it, Mikey. It's a dogfight. Yeah, and, and to be expected, right? Uh, this is what you would think would be the case as you head into halftime and you're on the road, conference rival. This is what it's all about. you got to win these big sky games that are just so fierce and so tough, especially on the road. 
All right, we'll take a break again. It is halftime. Montana State leading Eastern Washington 24-21. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. I'm going to change the batteries. 10 port. Welcome back to Cheney, Washington. Montana State leading a dogfight today, 24 21 against Eastern Washington. This has been a heck of a game, and we'll get all the town pump quarter stats here in just a moment. The Bobcats need you to, or need your support to go for the win. Donate to the Bobcat Club's three to win campaign to reach our $3 million goal supporting student athletes. All right, let's take a look at the first uh, half stats presented by Town Pump for Montana State in that first half, 16 first downs. They had 27 rushes and 226 yards on the ground. Through the air, five of 10, 47 yards uh, passing. Overall, 273 yards for Montana State in that first half. For Eastern Washington, 10 first downs, 16 rushes, 114 yards. They only have 77 yards through the air on just 9 of 13. So Eastern Washington, just 191 yards in that first half. Last year, with a different, uh, a different crew, they, they averaged 555 yards of offense per game, which was tops in the nation. It was the second time in three years they've led the nation in offense. But again, just 191 yards in that first half. 
See every pulse pounding, uh, buzzer beating play in astounding detail with a patient experience that's second to none, experienced doctors and advanced technology. Vance Thompson Vision, the official LASIK and cataract surgeon of the Bobcats, is your place for laser vision correction. Learn more at VanceThompsonVision.com. Individually in that first half for Montana State, Tommy Ballant went four of eight through the air, 42 yards. He was injured late in that first quarter. He was sliding a, a baseball slide after a run up the middle. He had given himself up. He was on the ground. He was down and done with the play. He got hit by two guys. Pretty shocking there wasn't a, uh, a flag on the play, but he was down for quite some time. They had to take the face mask off. It looked like he lost consciousness. He eventually got to his feet and walked off a little wobbly. Dan Davies reporting that he is on the sideline in street clothes, so hopefully he's going to be okay moving forward. I mean, that was more about a quality of life concern than it was about just what you're doing on the field, but he is back on the field and uh, at least walking around. Sean Chambers taking over as the quarterback. He's one for two through the air, a five-yard touchdown pass to Willie Patterson today. Willie P, three catches, 22 yards. Elijah Elliott, one catch, 15 yards. Ravi Alston, one catch, 10 yards today. On the ground, Elijah Elliott with a touchdown already, seven, uh, seven rushes, 94 yards. He had a 45-yard scamper for a touchdown. Sean Chambers, 10 rushes, 83 yards, his longest, 30 yards today. Willie Patterson has one rush of 15 yards. R.J. Fitzgerald, two rushes, 13 yards. He's got his first career touchdown today, and, boy, he was ecstatic. You can see it. It, it broke the sideline, and all the gold T-shirts on the far side from all the Bobcats that made the trip out here, they were hyping him up. You could hear the roar on the field when he got over there and acknowledged Cat Country that had made the trip out here to Cheney. Tommy Mallott had three carries for 10 yards. Marquis Johnson, three carries, eight yards. Clee Van Thomas, one carry, three yards. For Eastern Washington, Gunnar Talkington, nine of 13 through the air, 77 yards and a touchdown. Micah Smith running the football, six carries, 91 yards and two touchdowns. 56 yard score at the beginning of this game. He had two easy walks into the end zone early before the Montana State defense started to shore up. Silas Pereira, two carries, 14 yards. Jackson, three carries, 11 yards in that first half. Uh, and through the air, Efton Chisholm, four catches, 33 yards, one touchdown. Dylan Ingram, two catches, 30 yards in that first half. Bozeman Health doesn't want you to have an injury timeout. A primary care provider helps keep you healthy and in the game. Visit bozemanhealth.org today to find a primary care provider in Belgrade, Big Sky, or Bozeman. Your care is our purpose. We'll take a break. We are at halftime. Montana State leading Eastern Washington 24-21. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. The students and staff of the Eagle Marching Band would like to wish Coach Best and the Eagles the best of luck. Cool. Do I have two more breaks?
Montana State leading. Montana State leading Eastern Washington 24-21. We are at halftime, the first Big Sky contest of the season. Presented by McDonald's Rewards. Download the McDonald's app to start earning free McDonald's and get great game day deals. Let's take a look at some of the other scores on the opening weekend of conference play. They are late in the fourth quarter. Northern Colorado leading Idaho State comfortably today, 35-14. Idaho at Northern Arizona, a tough place to play, and Idaho's got a touchdown lead. They're up 17 to 10. That game just started in the second half, so 14 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Montana handling business at home against Portland State today. They're up 39-14 at halftime at home against Portland State. So Grizz doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then Sacramento State at Colorado State. Colorado State is 0-3 this year. Sac State is up 24-10 at halftime. And then a little bit later tonight at uh, 7 o'clock or uh, uh, 6 o'clock, or rather 8 o'clock Mountain Time, UC Davis hosting Weber State, the top two most prolific quarterbacks early in the year in the Big Sky. Weber State and UC Davis coming up tonight at uh, 8 o'clock Mountain Time. UC Davis will be in Bozeman next week. We're back home for two games. Got to UC Davis next week, Idaho State the week after that back at Bobcat Stadium. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you. As part of the Toyota Rewards Program, you can win exclusive swag throughout the year along with re receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle in to be serviced at your local Montana Toyota dealers. To join the program, visit msubobcats.com slash Toyota Rewards to register. Toyota, proud to be a partner of Bobcat Athletics. Take a break. When we get back, we'll get you set for the second half of play. Montana State leading Eastern Washington 24-21 at halftime. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
It's been a dogfight through the first 30 minutes of action. Montana State finding themselves on top for now, up 24-21 as we get ready to go for the second half of play. Enjoy Cat Chat, the official radio show of head coach Brent Vegan and Bobcat Athletics over Wings and Beer every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Last week we talked to Sebastian Valdez and Justice Perkins. It was a wonderful conversation with those two kids who are on the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of how chatty they are, but they were both a lot of fun to be with over at B-Dubs last week. All right, we're getting ready to roll for the second half of play, but first, Mikey, let's get to our McDonald's delivery of the first half, presented by your locally owned and operated McDonald's of Montana. What do you got? I'm going to go with uh, Elijah Elliott, that 45-yard touchdown run in the first quarter, really to get things kicked off and look for more of that in the second half. So that is our McDonald's delivery of the half. Also, uh, Montana State football is presented in part by Fire, Firehouse Subs. Well, that, that touchdown run he had, I mean, you, I just don't think you can, you know, underestimate how big that was for Montana State because you know, it was a three and out from the Cats. Eastern Washington came back with a huge, I mean, easy cakewalk of a touchdown run, and it, you don't know what you're going to get out of Elijah Elliott. Well, he's been explosive, but you didn't see that in game action, and that run he had it was, uh, as you mentioned, kind of just a traditional run play, and he broke that thing wide open. Robbie Alston had a big block on that play as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, he, he's averaging 16.8 <laughs> yards per, per carry. He's got five touches for 84 yards and a touchdown in that first half, and I, I don't know uh, again, I, I don't know what's going on in, in the huddle and, and in the locker room and those types of things, but I'm not sure why they haven't given him more touches in that first half. We'll see if he gets more here in the second half and trying to, to get him uh, the football a little bit more because he sure has been productive. All right, we are just about ready to roll. Montana State will kick it away. The Cats' uh, defense really started to stand up strong at the end of that first half, and they're going to need it again here against this strong Eastern offense. Yeah, a lot to build on. Those are things to celebrate, those three and outs back-to-back, -back, and uh, they get the opportunity to jump right out here again and uh, look for more success, and they've got to stop the run first and foremost, try and make this Eastern offense a little one-dimensional. Montana State will kick it away. We'll get some thoughts from Dan in a moment after this kickoff. Blake Glessner ready to uh, line it up and boot it away from right to left on top of this red turf here in Cheney. Here's the kickoff. That's a big booming kick. Whoa, look out. He just kicked that thing off the wall behind the uh, the touch or the uh, end zone. A little upset he missed that chip shot at the end of that first half and took it out on the football there. All right, Dan Davies down on the sidelines. Dan, what are you looking for as we start this second half? Well, I, I think Bobcats, despite missing that field goal there at the end of the first half, have confidence and uh, their defense has really turned things around here, particularly late in that second quarter. Yeah, it looked like it was in for a long day after those first couple of touches in that uh, first quarter, but... Montana State has gotten a couple of three and outs at the end of that first half. First snap for Eastern Washington. Talkington looking to throw. He fires the first down marker in and out of the hands of the receiver. Nice tackle there, too, as well. Nolan Askelson there helped to break it up on a pass intended for Freddie Roberson. Yeah, good job by Nolan from his uh, linebacker spot to push for a little bit of width, finds that route, gets underneath it, and breaks it up. Second and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Here's the snap, talking 10. Under pressure, Sebastian Valdez is there. Sack deep in the backfield. And they are lucky that he got to the quarterback because they had a little screen and go on the outside out of a bunch formation, and they had uh, receivers streaking right down the middle. Old Freddie Roberson was wide open. Sebastian Valdez, five and a half sacks this year. Give him seven and a half in his career. He's only a sophomore. Third and 18 from their own 17-yard line. Eastern takes the snap, hands it off, running up the middle, gets out of an ankle tackle, and is finally taken down as he gets back to the original line of scrimmage just as Jackson tackled there. Jackson yeah, th really good job getting off the field. Credit Sebastian Valdez coming up with a sack when you absolutely need it. Again, that's three three and outs by this Bobcat D. So much to build on, so much to celebrate. And again, getting off the field, giving yourself a breather, getting the offense back to the field. Now it's time to get some breathing room. I mean, this has been a really entertaining game, but Montana State has not led by more than three in this ball game. Yeah, they gotta take the opportunity to try and just create a little bit of space, catching it on the run. Line drive punt, grabbed by Dollar, and he is tackled at the 40-yard line. Already a blocked kick today from 
Ty Okada blocked punt, so you could kind of see it a little bit in that tentative kick that time from uh, Eastern Washington as the Cats take over with their first possession of the second half. Yeah, as I was saying, mid-sentence mid there, Taco catches it on the run. Smart punt there by, by Eastern just to get it off. They didn't want to mess with it deep in their own territory. Taco catches it on, on the little one hop. He's able to get a little bit out of it. This Bobcat O is back up. Look for them to continue to establish this run. On their own 42-yard line, 13.40 to go in the sec or in the uh, third quarter. Montana State leading 24-21. to 21. Here's the snap. Chambers fires. That's caught by Snell across the 40-yard line into Eagle territory, and he's tackled up to the 35. Boy, yeah, Pickering and Snell there. That was an interesting play. Yeah, two tight ends uh, running down the field. Nice play action. Really did a good job selling the fake. And those guys got behind the secondary. Good throw uh, by Sean Chambers to Derek Snell. Derek is a smooth athlete. I like it with the ball with, in his hands. He does a really good job, very productive. I mean, he's an unselfish player, does a great job blocking as well. 19-yard reception, a first interstate bank first down up to the 34-yard line of the Eagles. Here's the snap. Chambers rolls out to the right side. He fires on a crossing route, and it's in and out of the hands of Pickering. He got tackled right as he put his mitts on it, and it's incomplete. Yeah, just a, a play action. Another good fake ends up booting out to his right. Really, Sean Chambers, that was a great throw. He, he threw a fastball in there, hit him right in the numbers. Pickering's got to find a way to come up with that ball. Don't forget, Chambers was a starter at Wyoming. It's not like he just randomly left. He was a starter out there, battled a lot of injuries, had multiple season-ending injuries as the starting quarterback for Wyoming. He's ready out of the pistol formation on second and 10. Takes the snap. He will hand it off to Patterson, and he is taken down to the backfield, coming around and the uh, second option of that play, and uh, Eastern Washington was not fooled. Yeah, just running a, a little reverse play there. Or an end around, faking the handoff to the running back, giving it to Willie Patterson around the edge, but that secondary was not fooled for Eastern Washington. Tackle for loss, this is a third and long. Third and 17 after the seven yard loss on the 41 yard line of the Eagles. 12.30 to go in the third quarter. Snap to Chambers out of the shotgun, looking to throw. Fires to the right or left side, caught by Willie Patterson up at the 30 yard line. He will be six yards shy of the first down, but that's another good looking throw. And we're seeing Chambers catch a little rhythm here. Yeah, absolutely. A confident throw. Again, they're playing man to man on the outside. That was a tight window. It's Bob is gonna go for it. Fourth and six at the 31 yard line of the Eagles. Shotgun formation on the left hash mark. Snap to Chambers, looking to throw, steps up. He's got space, he's running, he's got the first down and is hit a yard past the first interstate bank. First down marker, smart play. He was looking to throw, he took his time. Yeah, I, I think he, he counted on that, right? That, uh, that defensive line getting up field, rushing the passer. He kind of waits for a simple window. I think he was gonna keep it all the way. Those receivers are running verticals to run off the secondary. He tried to slide there, but you can tell he's not a real comfortable slider. He wants to run somebody over. Well, and he had to make sure he got past that first down marker. So now they're going to change the play. Looks over to the right sideline. Elijah Elliott steps over to the left hip of uh, Chambers. Three wide receivers spread out to the right side, also in the furthest out. Here's the snap. Design run. Running left behind Elliott, and he dives forward. Another nice little chunk play there. And takes it inside the 20 into the Rose Hours red zone. He kind of slams the ball into the turf there. I thought they, he thinks they had a little bit more. I thought they did too. Um, Elijah Elliott tries to be a little bit of a lead blocker. Kind of jumbles it up just a touch, but a lot of space there. They're going to continue to try and run this ball. Second and six. Clock running just under 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Montana State up 24-21. They're at the uh, Eagles 19-yard line. Snap out of the pistol, Chambers drops it, it's loose, he picks it back up and kind of barrel rolls forward and uh, no gain on the play, that could have been a disaster. Yeah, luckily he picks that thing up and is able to secure it, get back to the line of scrimmage. It was a good bounce, let's just say that. <laughs> that basketball bounce, we'll take it. I remember that bounce last week against Oregon State, that running back dropped it, bounced back up about chest high, got it and ended up turning it into a big play. Third and six, Montana State at the Eagle 19 yard line. Chambers with Elliott to his right hip, Alston to the left, Patterson at spread out to the right side. Chambers lining it up, ready to go. He takes the snap. He will keep it running right outside the hash marks, turns up field, uses the stiff arm, dives forward. Did he get the marker? 
He is up to the first down marker. First interstate bank, first down. Montana State man, Sean Chambers, he's getting exactly the amount of yards he needs. Absolutely. And, and look, he needs to know where those sticks are and what a veteran player. He's played a lot of football. He knows exactly where he's got to get to to move the chains. And credit to him getting right there to that spot and moving the sticks. So fresh first interstate bank, first down from the 13-yard line of the Eagles. Montana State trying to maintain a long drive here, leading 24-21. This matches their largest lead of the day. Here's the snap to Chambers. He keeps it running left, uses a stiff arm, and cannot get free of a man in the backfield. Yeah, called his own number there. Just his own read. He ends up pulling it and keeping it. That uh, Eastern Eagle defense stays home. That quarterback defender staying disciplined. Makes a good tackle, and uh, you can tell Sean Chambers is a little bit fatigued. He's had quite a few touches on this drive. That was Derek Tomasini who had the tackle. He transferred from Idaho, who's a junior. So it'll be second and 11. Sean Chambers now 15 carries, 100 yards today. Tommy Malat out for the rest of the game after an injury. Working on the left hash mark. Again, second and 11 from the Eagles' 14-yard line. Here's the snap. Chambers hands it off. No, he keeps it, runs right, and he runs right into a wall again. Maybe got a yard to the uh, back to the original line of scrimmage. I know he's wanting to call his number here, and I think he loves the ball in his hands, and that's the type of gamer he is, but one of these times he's got to give it. Got to give it, keep that defense a little bit honest, a little he bit unpredictable. And he's three of five through the air. Picked up a couple of third downs and a fourth down on this drive. Now third and eight from the Eagle 12 yard line inside the Rosauer's red zone. Clock running, nearing the eight minute mark of the third quarter. Cats up 24 21. Shotgun formation. Elliott to the right of Chambers. Patterson spread out right. Alston spread out left. Chambers. Claps his hands, takes the chest high snap, hands off to Elliott, cuts back up the middle. He dives forward. He's just shy of the goal line. Clock still running. Let's see, did he get the first down? Yes, he did. And that'll be another first interstate bank first down, first and goal. So there's that same play. Good give, good decision. And Elijah Elliott putting his foot in the ground, getting downhill, finds a small seam. Good burst out of Elijah Elliott, knowing where the sticks are at. First down in the red zone. The 10 yard gain for Elijah Elliott. He's over 100 yards now. He's got 104. Sean Chambers has 102 today. 248 yards on the ground for the Cats. First and goal to go from the two yard line. Chambers empty in the backfield. Here's Patterson in motion, takes the snap. Chambers runs up the middle, dives forward. He is into the end zone. Touchdown, Bobcats. The eighth rushing touchdown of the year for Sean Chambers. And the Cats have a 30 to 21 lead with the PAT coming. Yeah, a little motion, misdirection, uh, a really a, a fly sweep as, as they call it. to Get those uh, linebackers' eyes a little bit occupied, freeze them for just a second. Sean Chambers doing the rest like he's done eight other or seven other times this season, just getting downhill and finding a way to get in the end zone. Another town pump touchdown. Sullivan snaps it, Lighton puts it down, and Glessner puts it up through the goalposts for the successful PAT. Montana State taking a 31-21 lead with 7.25 to go in the third quarter. Sean Chambers completes a 12-play, 58-yard scoring drive for the Cats. We'll take a break, score one more time. Cats 31, Eagles 21, 7.25 to go in the third quarter. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield.
Montana State leading 31-28 over Eastern Washington, 7.25 to go in the third quarter. At Montana's Rib and Chop House, our staff is dedicated to creating extraordinary experiences that raise the bar in each of our communities. Enjoy premium steaks, fresh seafood, and award-winning baby back ribs. We look forward to sharing a little Rocky Mountain hospitality with you. Bobcats ready to boot it away from right to left after a 12-play, 58-yard scoring drive, couple of big third down and a fourth down conversion on that drive. Yeah, I love the bold play call, too, to just call your own number on fourth down to say, look, we're going to go get this thing and uh, letting your defense rest up, see if this D can get a fourth straight third uh, three and out here on this drive. Lesnar boots it right out of the back of the end zone. Again, another touchback and the uh, Eagles will take over. Let's go down to the sidelines. Dan Davies is uh, down there. Dan, what'd you see on that drive from the Cats? Well, a, a nice, long, sustained drive nonetheless, but the, that three and out for the Bobcat defense was special right there to start the half, and then to take a nice, long drive down there, That's uh, you can't draw it up any better than that. That's Dan Davies down on the sidelines. I'm Keaton Gilogly alongside Mikey Ryder up at the first Interstate Bank broadcast booth. Eagles taken over, their offense has really stalled out here. They begin at their own 25 yard line. Talkington out of the shotgun formation, takes the snap, he hands it off. Smith running left, uses a stiff arm and he's taken down right away. Nice tackle by Reddy Short. I think they're gonna get ready for a horse collar tackle there. Got a little bit up high. Good job defeating his block, but just gotta finish a little cleaner. Yeah, I think you're right, Mikey. Here's the announcement. There is no foul on the play. Second down. Well, there you go. You were both wrong. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome because he should be credited. That was a good hustle play, defeating the block. Good tackle. I don't mean being. I don't mind being wrong on stuff like that. I'm with you, Dan. <laughs> I am with you. Two yard gain. Second and eight. Eagles on their own 27. Here's the snap. Fakes the handoff. Throws to Chisholm. That's caught, and he runs backwards toward the 32 yard line, and it'll be third and. Uh, three for the Eagles. And here we go, third and three. We're gonna add another tight end. They're gonna be in 12 personnel, so one back, two tight ends. See if they're gonna run it. Now the snap, he does hand it off, runs right, he stood right up. I don't think he got it, he was right there. That was a heck of a storm of white jerseys right there. Yeah, credit that defense. I think it was Nolan Askelson first on the scene there. Brody Greeby also and, in there. And Brody Greeby, both guys running their feet on contact. That is the fourth straight two and out, or three and out for this Bobcat D. Really great job, again, getting off the field. That's hard to do. This is a, an offense that prides themselves on scoring points, and uh, they did a lot of that in the first half, but good job by this defense making some adjustments, shoring things up. So the Eagles will punt it away with 6.03 to go in the third quarter. Here's the chest high snap. The punt is angling over to the left side. Taco Dollar gets out of the way, takes a, a catch bounce, and Montana State will have some good field position when we come back. Montana State will take things over at their own 37-yard line after this timeout. 5.53 to go in the third. Cats 31, Eagles 21. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
is back at a quarterback. Tommy Mallott injured at the end of the first quarter. He will not return today. Four wide receivers set. Here's the snap. Chambers looking to throw. Nice pocket. Fires over to the flat on the right side. And Marquis Johnson is wrapped up quickly. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Yeah, a little bit of a late throw. I think it was his last read. Gets it to him, but that defender was right all over Marquis Johnson as soon as he caught that football in the flat. At First Interstate, it's all about supporting our communities and cheering on our teams. Thank you for letting us be your trusted community bank for more than 50 years. First Interstate Bank, built for you, member FDIC. Pistol formation, Patterson the lone receiver to the left, two wide receivers out to the right side. And we've got a flag. Full start on the Caps. Full start, number 63, five yard penalty, second down. Second and 15 coming up. So a catch at their own 32 yard line. John Chambers took over in this game at the end of that first quarter after Malat got hurt, turned that in to a scoring drive. Got a pistol formation again, two wide receivers to the right side. That's Thomas and Alston Patterson over to the left side. Here's the snap, fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Deep shot down the middle, that's caught. First interstate bank, first down for the Cats. Cleve and Thomas, one of his longer catches of the season, and the Cats up to their own 49. Yeah, good to see a, a, a really confident throw. Sean Chambers, it's a dig route by Cleve and Thomas. Runs up about 10 or 15 yards, kind of a square in or dig as they call it. Um, looks like his defender had outside leverage. He's breaking inside. Pretty good, easy throw, but very confident throw by Sean Chambers to move the, the chains and another first down. He's looking like the experienced quarterback he is. The transfer from Wyoming takes the pistol formation snap under pressure, and he is tackled the backfield. Eastern Washington set up camp in the Cats' uh, backfield on that one. Yeah, that was a corner blitz there, which you'll see a lot of times uh, from the boundary or the short side, and with the Bobcats uh, really on their their right. Uh, their own right hash. That uh, that corner blitz came from that same side, and uh, they're able to bring him down. I think that was the corner, Trey Weed. He's the uh, Arizona State transfer, able to get Sean Chambers down, or, or actually flush him, and then the uh, defensive line did the rest. Second and 13, Cats their own 46-yard line. 3:45 to go in the third quarter. Cats up 31-21. Here's the snap. Hands it off, Elliott running left, breaks a backfield tackle, spins off another tackle, and works his way across the original line of scrimmage as he loses his helmet. Man, that was a grueling run by Elijah Elliott. He had to make like three men miss before he even got back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, and he lost his helmet there, and as soon as you lose your helmet, they're gonna blow it dead right there, right there, and the, they stop the ball. There's no forward progress or anything, so he's gonna set up a third and 11. Yeah, he would have picked up another two, maybe three yards had he not lost his cap. Third and 11. Eagles faithful starting to get a little louder now. Shotgun, snap, chest tie taken by Chambers, looking to throw, deep ball down the left sideline. Willie Patterson cannot make the catch. It got slightly tipped by Darian Sampson, the cornerback. Good coverage, that was a heck of a toss and he just missed it. Yeah, those are those 50-50 balls and the one-on-ones that are gonna continue to test those corners on the outside as they're playing that man-to-man -man coverage. Good throw by Sean Chambers, catchable football, but you gotta credit the defense getting a hand in there. Still were able to hold on to that football for a while, so you know, regardless of not really picking up much on that drive, at least it wasn't just a quick three and out. The defense can get recharged. They have really been the backbone of this Cats uh, squad since the start of that second quarter. Here's the punt, the snap. It's kicked up in the air near the 10-yard line. A fair catch called for, and he hauls it in at about the 10, maybe 11-yard line. 3.10 to go in the third quarter. We will take a break. Montana State leading 31-21 over Eastern Washington. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
Montana State leading 31-21 over Eastern Washington as we get set for the fourth quarter of play. Celebrate the Cats with some delicious McKenzie River pizza. They've got all your tailgating and post-game celebration grub covered. Order online at McKenzieRiverPizza.com. Third and 14 coming up for the Cats at their own 38-yard line as we flip the sides of the field here. And a big third down coming for Montana State. Eastern Washington's defense has started to figure something out over the last couple of drives now. Yeah, and, and this is a third and very long. And, you know, are they going to keep it safe here and, and run a draw play or just something um, up the middle and just understand that you're going to punt and make this Eastern offense try and do some work? Or are they going to take a shot downfield? Well, the thing you can do here, I don't think you want to get too crazy, but you should be able to get good field position here for your defense if you don't get the first down. Yep, yep, and I think they got to be smart with a 10-point lead here. You don't want to do anything too aggressive that's going to set you back too far. I wouldn't be surprised if they just chalk, up, chalk it up as a, as a third, and, uh, third and long, try and run this thing up the middle, and then get your defense back out there. Eagle defense trying to pump up this crowd. Just shy of a sellout, 7,200 in attendance today. They can fit 8,600 in here to get the sellout. A big bulk of that is Cats fan. I mean, literally the entire section on the opposite side of the field. It's not a huge section, maybe 15 rows that runs from each 20 yard line. I mean, it's basically all Montana State fans over there. That is just a beautiful sight. And they've made their presence known, but now Montana State's gonna need a big play here, third and 14th, their own 38 yard line. Bridger Brewing is home to award-winning locally crafted beer and pizza. Bridger Brewing cheers to every adventure being better than the last. Scoreboard telling them to make some noise. Cheerleaders holding up some signs asking Eagles Nation to make some noise. One wide receiver out high on the left side. That's Alston. On the near side, it's Patterson, Thomas, and Pickering. Elijah Elliott in the backfield next to Sean Chambers. Tommy Malott out with an injury the rest of the game. Possibly beyond, we do not know. Ready to go, out of the center of the field, the snap. Chambers looking to throw, no, he's gonna run up the middle, breaks an ankle tackle, and is stood up at the 40 yard line. So a short gain, it'll be fourth down, but Montana State can flip the field here and really pin Eastern back. Yeah, absolutely, I think that was initially the plan. And uh, look, you didn't turn the ball over, the clock is running, try and execute a really good punt here. This is key for this punt cover unit. They got a heck of a guy back there in Bryce Lighton. And a very experienced snapper, Tommy Sullivan. Let's go Eagles chant breaking out. Receiver lined up, or returner rather, lined up at the 20. Here's the high snap, caught, kicked, down the left sideline, bounces at the 30, takes a cat's roll, and bounces out of bounds at about the 19 yard line. So you keep them inside the 20, pretty solid punt and Eastern Washington will take over officially at their own 20 yard line. Yeah, good operation time there with the snap and the kick, getting that thing off. Got a long way to go here for this Eagle offense. If the Bobcats score a touchdown during the fourth quarter at any home or away game during the regular season, four lucky fans will be selected to win a prize. Sign up today at msubobcats.com slash rav4, the number four. Shotgun formation, four wide receivers, one in motion from right to left. Here's the snap, Talkington to throw off the right hash mark. Fires over the middle, that is caught by Roberson. He's got space across the 50, across the 30, angling to the right sideline. He's inside the 10, into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. An 80-yard strike from Talkington to Roberson. It's 31. 27, PAT coming for Eastern Washington, and the big plays have been killer today. Yeah, I, I think it was just a, it was a post route. Simeon Woodard had outside leverage and, and really a pretty much of a free release, it looked like, and uh, throwing on time. Not much pressure there on the quarterback, and uh, stepped up and really good route, pitch and catch. Those big plays are killer for this Bobcat D. So an 80 yard catch and run. And now the PAT is up and it is good. So 31, 28 as we head to a break. Cats still with a one score lead. 13.59 to go in the ball game. 
Montana State 31, Eastern Washington 28. We'll take a break. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Montana State leading Eastern Washington 31-28, 14 minutes to go in the ball game. Let's get to our town pump stats as we're early in the fourth quarter for Montana State. 345 yards today, Eastern Washington, 298 yards. They've got 168 through the air, almost half of them on that last play, which was an 80-yard catch and run for Eastern Washington from Gunnar Talkington to Freddie Roberson. And when you look at the Scoring plays for Eastern Washington, three of those four touchdowns have all been big play strikes. It was the two big uh, rushing touchdowns, 56 yards from uh, Micah Smith, and then 28 yards after that, and now the 80-yard reception for Freddie Roperson. And Mikey, we did kind of know, you really saw it in that first week of the season, Montana State's defense is a little susceptible to some big plays. Yeah, and this is in stark contrast to what we saw a season ago. And so, um, Look, you, you, you got to make offenses drive the field, and these long, explosive plays, uh, they're just they're very hard on your morale. So they got to find a way to shore those things up, and they will. Um, what can help this is a good rushing attack, a nice, long, sustained drive, and go get some points by this Bobcat O. Elijah Elliott, 10 carries, 109 yards and a touchdown today. Also touchdowns from Sean Chambers, R.J. Fitzgerald, and Willie Patterson for the Cats, who lead 31 at 28. 13.59 to go in the ball game. Here's the kickoff from Eastern Washington, right center cut down the middle of the field, and on a hop, bounces out of the back of the end zone. At Montana State University in Bozeman, we like to think outside, but not just because we have access to some of the best outdoor recreation on the planet. We like to think outside because we are creators, researchers, artists, and thinkers breaking boundaries at over 250 fields. Montana State University, mountains and mines. All right, here we go. This is a crucial drive for the Bobcats. They started to stall out a little bit on the last two possessions. Yeah, I want to see them get back to the run game. They kind of uh, got away from it a little bit. I'm sure they will this drive. Here's the snap out of the shotgun. They do hand it off immediately. Elijah Elliott runs into just a massive mess right at the line of scrimmage. He is stopped after a two-yard gain. He's averaging, before that run, 11 yards a carry. Yeah, I've been very productive today. That was a good play on defense. They're going to stick to it, though. So this Bobcat offense does. They run the football. Second and eight. Sean Chambers has made a couple of nice passes, too, since he took over for the injured Tommy Bolot, who went out at the end of the first quarter. Cats up 31-28, but the Eagles just struck for an 80-yard score. Pistol formation, two receivers on either side. Chambers claps his hands, takes a high snap, tosses to the right side. Elliott gets to the outside, outside the numbers, and he is back at the 30-yard line and stopped immediately. It'll be third and five. That was a big hit. It was a good tackle, but again, manageable here, third and five. It's that same speed option look that we've seen in the first half. 
Holding. Ooh. Number two of the offense. Ten yard penalty. Second down. I didn't, see that, I didn't see that flag initially. Yeah, neither did I. So Cleveland Thomas hit for the uh, the holding. So that'll be second down now, backing up inside their own 20-yard line. Clock running, under 13 minutes to go. All right, that missed chip shot of a field goal toward the end of that first half, looming large now. Kind of figured it would in a tight conference matchup between the Cats and the Eagles. Two of the teams ranked in the top 25 of the nation. Here's the snap. Chambers fakes the handoff, throws to Fitzgerald off the mark, just off into the flat. And that pass incomplete. Third and 17, Cats at their own 18-yard line. He had a little play action. He had RJ in the flat, uh, pretty wide open. Would have been able to get some yardage back from that penalty, but just sailed on him a little bit. Sailed wide right. Elijah Elliott back in as the running back. Patterson spritz out to the left side along with Thomas in the slot. Snell in the slot to the near side along with Robbie Alston. So four wide receivers. Elijah Elliott on the hip with a shotgun formation on the right hash mark next to Sean Chambers. Takes a chest high snap looking to throw. Pass time. Slips out to the left side. Throws on the run. Caught on the, on the sideline by Willie Patterson as he tumbles out of bounds. Shy of the first down marker by four yards up to the 31 yard uh, yard line. It'll be fourth and four for the Bobcats. And uh, they are short of the first down and will bring out their punting unit. Look, I know they were short of the first down there, but that's a really good throw and catch, giving yourself a little bit of breathing room. And you got a very capable punter that can hopefully flip the field. But if you didn't get that yardage back, you're, you're, you're really in a tough field position in terms of giving it back to Eastern. So um, that was not all for nothing there on that play. Got a real nice catch again by Patterson, who made the catch stuck both his toes in the turf and then stumbled out of bounds. Here's the punt and it is short and it is shanked. That is out of bounds on the far sideline and Eastern Washington is gonna have tremendous field position into Bobcat territory up to the 45 yard line of Montana State where the Eagles will take over down by three with 12 minutes to go in the ball game. Yeah, a lot of momentum here for the team in red and, and this Bobcat D has gotta find a way to Dig in a little bit. We'll take a break. 12 11 to go in the fourth quarter. Bobcats 31, Eagles 28. Eagles take it over. When we come back, this is Bobcat football from Learfield. Bobcat football is brought to you by Bridger Steel. Create lasting beauty with Bridger Steel, metal roofing, siding, and accent panels. 12-11 to go in the ball game. Montana State leading 31-28 over Eastern Washington, who is about to take over at the Bobcat 45-yard line after a rare, very short punt from Bryce Lighton, only 14 yards on that punt. Ended up landing on the track way outside of the field over on the far side, left side. Yeah, killer on the field position game. This defense got to rise to the occasion. It's been an inconsistent day from the Cats defense. They've given up some big plays, but they strung together a lot of three and outs in the middle of this game. 
takes the snap, hands it off, running up the middle to the 40-yard line, up to the 39-yard line. It'll be second and short after Devontae Smith had a nice run up the middle, a freshman from Ventura, California. That's his first carry of the game today. Yep. Six different guys have gotten carries for uh, Eastern Washington. Snap to Talkington, looking to throw. Fires down the middle, tipped incomplete. Uh, that was a high throw. That is a dangerous throw intended for Nolan Ohm. Really in this drop in this drop back pass game, they've really tried to attack the middle of the field and uh, really tried to bend it in there. Would have been a really good throw. Credit that defensive line, got a little bit of heat on him. Of course, a little bit of an errant throw. Third and four, Eagles at the 39 yard line in enemy territory. Talkington takes the shotgun snap, hands it off, run up the middle, he's met. Callahan O'Reilly there with a first touch up to the 35 yard line. He might be short, if he is, that was Callahan O'Reilly with a big stop, although you figure Eastern Washington is gonna go for it and he is short by maybe less than a yard. Yeah, and they're gonna get in their jumbo personnel here and see if they can't move the sticks. Fourth and less than a yard. Bobcat D better get set. Cats have an opportunity to make a big play on defense here, leading 31-28, 11 minutes to go in the ball game. Shotgun snap, hands it off, runs up the middle. He's got it, breaks through, and he is dragged down on a touchdown saving tackle somehow. Nolan Askelson grabbed him around the waist. He got dragged by three or four yards, but he just saved the touchdown. Yeah, good job holding on. It was just a power play that guard pulled really, really tightly from left to right. Running back just went right behind him. Fortunate to get him down. Live to play another down though, first down. Eagles up to the 26 yard line of the Cats. Here's the shotgun snap, hands it off. Smith runs up the middle. This time he is stopped, went, ran right into the belly of Sebastian Valdez. So second down coming up. A field goal would tie it. Montana State leading 31 to 28 with 10.26 to go in the ball game. And Eastern Washington now up to the 23 yard line. Boy, Montana State's defense was just so dominant in the middle of this ball game. And now after a rare poor punt, Eastern Washington poised to take advantage of some tremendous field position. They're set up in the middle of the field on second and seven. Shotgun formation takes the snap, looking to throw, fires into the flat, Chisholm makes the catch, makes a man miss, moves outside the numbers, inside the 10, hurdles a man and is shoved out of bounds by Ty Okada inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, just a numbers game there. They had a called run, but uh, they liked the numbers at, on the perimeter and uh, through just a simple bubble play, Tyson Pottinger who's in the game, uh, filling in for Jeffrey Manning. That was a long way to travel to try and make a tackle in space. Gotta have that tackle. Yeah, just stuck his foot in the ground and cut back right to get by Pottinger. 9.36 to go in the ball game, clock running. First and goal to go from the eight yard line. Snap to Talkington, rolls out right looking to throw. Nothing doing, fires into the end zone and it is caught. Touchdown, he cut back the other way to the far right side uh, sideline and Nolan Ohm catches the go ahead touchdown to the back of the end zone for the Eagles. Thirty-four, thirty-one, Eastern Washington. It looked covered well initially, but Alm cut back the other way after he had been running from right to left, cut back over toward that right sideline and makes a diving snag to put the Eagles back in front with 9.24 to go. PAT is due. Everybody's set, and now the snap. The hold is down, the kick is up, and that thing is good. 35-31, Eastern Washington on top. We'll take a break. With 9.24 to go, Montana State will receive the kick when we come back. Eagles, 35. Bobcats, 31. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
Mountain Cold Refreshment, Made to Chill, 2022 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. 9.24 to go in the ball game. Eagles 35, Bobcats 31 of the big sky opener. And, and Mikey, this uh, Bobcat defense, they got so stiff in the middle of this game, and now two big scoring drives for Eastern Washington on their last two touches. Yeah, and, and Eastern is really gone right back to the run game to kind of get things kicked off and get some really big chunk plays that's then opened up the pass and uh, been almost feast or famine it seems for this Bobcat D. They got to get back on track if they want to try and win this ball game. Bobcat football presented by my McDonald's Rewards. Download the McDonald's app to start earning free McDonald's and great game day deals. Eastern Washington will kick it off. Marquis Johnson back to receive for Montana State. This kick will come from right to left. Eastern Washington taking their first lead since midway through the second quarter. They've scored 14 unanswered points. Montana State looked like they were really starting to control this game early to midway through that third quarter, but two straight scores, two straight touchdowns for Eastern Washington. Kick is off. Marquis Johnson makes the catch. He'll take it out of the end zone. Running along the left hash mark. Cuts up to the middle of the field. Gets behind Snell, and he is tackled inside the 20-yard line, and that's where Montana State will take over. All right, let's see what this Cats offense can do now. Sean Chambers in at quarterback. Tommy Mullott went out with an injury after he took a heavy hit. It really, what should have been an illegal hit, although it was not flagged. And he has been out since late in the first quarter. Chambers along with Elijah Elliott in the backfield for the Cats. Willie Patterson spread out high on the left side. Lee Van Thomas in the slot. Robbie Alston on the near side spread out as the lone wide receiver that way. Pickering the tight end with his hand down. Pistol snap. Hands off for Elliott. He busts through the line. He's got a first down and he spun down across the 35 yard line. What a day for Elijah Elliott. Well over 100 yards approaching 150 today. Yeah, and a really good burst. Really good burst. We've seen that out of him a lot today. Look for them to keep riding him as the game goes on. First Interstate Bank, first down after that 15-yard run for Elijah Elliott. He's got 127 yards on only 13 carries. Patterson sped out to the left side. Thomas, the near side slot receiver with Robbie Alston to his right. Pistol snap, hands it off. Elliott running left, cuts back right along the hash mark, spins forward and stopped at the 39-yard line. That's a four-yard gain for Elijah Elliott again, and it'll be second and manageable. Yeah, still plenty of room there. Credit that Bobcat O. Opened up some pretty good lanes. Good burst out of Elijah Elliott. He looks fresh. He, again, he's only touched it 14 times today. Look for them to continue to ride that as it's been pretty good, pretty big chunk plays here on first and second down. How is this kid the fifth string running back? The depth we've seen in this running back position has been quite impressive. Here we are in week four. Shotgun formation. Man in motion, that's Thomas. Takes the snap, hands it off. Elliott runs left again, and he is spun down just shy of the first down marker. Another nice uh, nice gain, and it'll be third and one. And same run play, just an outside zone, or inside zone rather, to the left side. Finding a seam. Third and short. With this Bobcat, oh, go to work. This offensive line, work in the trenches, and let's go get a yard. That's all you need for another first down. Bobcats trailing 35-31 They're at their own 44-yard line. Third and one with the clock running at the 7.35 mark. Empty backfield. Chambers on the left hash mark. Steps up to the line of scrimmage. The crowd starts to get loud. Steps back. Man in motion from left to right. Takes the snap. Runs up the middle. He's got the first down running left outside the numbers. Sean Chambers into Eagles territory. And he angles out of bounds at the 45-yard line. First interstate bank, first down. That was an easy run. Yeah, quarterback keep all the way to the left side. That left side of the line collapsed uh, with a little bit of a play action. Um, and good job pulling it, knowing where the, the first down marker is and just getting there. Getting wisely getting out of bounds and not taking a shot. First and 10 for Montana State. Again, Tommy Mallott out today. So Sean Chambers, a guy who's very experienced, the transfer from Wyoming, running the show since the end of the first quarter. Bobcats down, 35-31. Eagles have scored two touchdowns in the last two drives. Snap, handoff. Elliott runs left. This time he's hit in the backfield and falls forward to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second and 10. And they continue to run that zone play just off the left side. And Elijah Elliott tries to cut it back. But that defense stays at home, does a good job of kind of riding down the line of the scrimmage, and they're there for the tackle. 
48 rushes for the Cats today, 18 passes between Mallott and uh, Chambers. They are 10 of 18 through the air. Chambers 6 of 10 with 69 yards and a touchdown pass to Willie Patterson today. Pistol formation, one wide receiver left, two to the right. Here's the snap on second down, turns and hands it off. Elliott runs up the middle, gets across the line of scrimmage, and he's up to the 40-yard line after a five-yard gain. Third and five as Montana State is at the Eagle 45. Town Pump, the exclusive sponsor of the exciting Brawl of the Wild, invites you to visit a Town Pump store on your way home for gas and snacks. Safe travels from Town Pump. Crucial third down. The official's talking about something here. They're standing in the backfield. Reset the play clock to 25 seconds. The start of my ready for play signal. All right. Hometown uh, clock operator getting a little trigger happy. 5.50 to go in the ball game. Montana State down 35-31. Shotgun formation on third and five. Chambers, hands held chest high, claps his hands. He takes the snap, man was off sides. Chambers takes the shot down the right sideline. Patterson gets tackled, and that's pass interference. He just got ripped down. I think there's going to be two flags on this play, one for offsides, one for pass interference. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. There's a blitzer. Uh, linebacker was coming from a little bit of space from, from depth and just was trying to time that snap. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Offside, number 33, that penalty's declined. Pass interference, number seven of the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Easiest pass interference call you could have. Just literally got yanked down by his arms. Yeah, look, he had two hands on, on shoulder pads there and ended up pulling <laughs> Willie Patterson to the ground. He cannot do that. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm positive. <laughs> and I'm pretty defensive minded. <laughs> Can't even do that one in the backyard. Yeah, that's right. So. Cats up to the 25-yard line of the Eagles now, down 35-31, 5.37 to go in the ball game. Pistol formation, two wide receivers spread out to the right side. Takes the snap, hands it off, no, keeps it. Rolling out to the right side, outside the hash marks. Chambers tucks it, runs inside the 20, and he bowls forward over the cornerback inside the 10-yard line. First interstate bank, first down. That was a big boy blow by Sean Chambers. Yeah, really good play call too. Getting on the edge, just a really good play action. Fakes that, gets out of the pocket, and it was a two receiver route. Had the opportunity to throw it downfield if he had an open guy, but uh, really broke contain on the edge. Good job making a play with the ball in his hands, and we're in the red zone. The Rosauers red zone, another trip here for the Cats. They've given up 14 straight points, but they're knocking on the door. At the eight yard line on the right hash mark, first and goal to go. One wide receiver on either side, Patterson to the left, Alston to the right, snap. Firing over the middle, incomplete. Looking for Willie Patterson, threw it a little uh, to his back shoulder too much. He was a little late on that throw. Yeah, trying to get up just an isolation route on the outside. Willie trying to win on a slant route, selling it outside, tried to come back inside. Good, cr good coverage up top from the corner position for Darian Sampson. Interstate or Interwest Moving and Storage is the official moving company of the MSU Bobcats. Second and goal to go from the eight, under five minutes to play. Cats down 35-31. They did miss a chip shot field goal earlier, which is looming large now. Shotgun snap. Keeps it, Chambers running right, and he's upended almost immediately. He's up to the seven yard line, third down coming up. Really, you need a touchdown, so you got two plays here. Yeah, absolutely, and they, they know what they're doing here. They got two play calls. And, uh, they gotta go get the touchdown here with four minutes to go. With 25 years of proud business service, Consentus optimizes healthcare, dental, and small business solutions with a focus on your growth. Check them out today at Cosentis.com. Eagles fans making some noise. First big sky game of the year, living up to expectations between these two rivals. Third and goal from the seven. Cats down, 35-31. Snap to Chambers. He runs up the middle, cuts back left after bouncing off a tackler, and he is taken down again. And he loses a yard. It'll be fourth and goal from the eight. And it looks like Brett Vegan's going to use a timeout here to talk it over. With 3.57 to go in the ball game, Montana State down 35-31, and they need a score here. Yeah, they absolutely do, and you got ball on the eight-yard line, and uh, they're going to have to go to, with some creativity, if I would guess here. Don't be surprised maybe if they go back to the well 
what we saw last week against Oregon State, especially in the red zone, utilizing some of those empty packages uh, could be what they go to. They had a lot of success out of those sets. We'll see what Coach Housewright and company have got dialed up here for a pivotal fourth and eight. Dan Davies is down on the sideline. Uh, Dan, what are you seeing down there? What do you want to see on this next play? I want to see a touchdown. How about that? <laughs> no, it's, uh, this is nail-biting time right now. Big boy uh, play call by Taylor Housewright. And now it's up to the Bobcat offense to execute right here. Time to find out what this uh, Cats squad is made of. 3.57 to go in the ball game. Bobcats down 35-31. Fourth and goal to go from the eight yard line. One wide receiver left, two to the right. Now Pickering in motion from right to left. Chambers on the right, hash mark out of the shotgun formation. Claps his hands, takes the chest high snap, looking to throw, fires over the middle. It's intercepted. Eastern Washington gets the interception in the middle of the field. Jaron Banks takes it away in the end zone. They had some communication really late in the play clock there. Sean Chambers did with one of the receivers and it looked like they, they weren't on the same page, but he didn't have a real confident throw, pretty late throw right over the middle, hit the guy right in the chest. Yeah, they you, you said it, they did not look very confident going into that snap. Chambers kind of looked over the sideline twice, looked like he turned his palms up to the sky asking a question or two. And, you know, Montana State has two timeouts. Bobcats take over at their own 20. Yeah, and he had, he had time. He wasn't uh, uh, rushed out of the pocket. He was uh, able to look things over, just didn't make a great throw. Not done yet, but you need some plays. Here's the snap. They'll hand it off. Smith runs up the middle, breaks the backfield tackle. Ooh, it's loose. Fumble. Loose at the 20-yard line, and there's a scrum for the loose ball, and everybody's going to be diving forward for it. Gunner Talkington dove for it. The quarterback, I think he's down at the bottom of the pile. Who has this loose football at the 20-yard line? And it is Eastern Washington ball. Wow, nearly a major break. No, Bobcat football. The referee initially pointed to Eastern Washington. Montana State has recovered the ball. They'll take over at the 20 yard line. The Bobcat guys were pointing to their Eastern's end zone the whole time that were out there. But credit whoever came up with that fumble because it probably changed hands a couple times in that pile. You know that it did, Dan. <laughs> Don't cut your nails before game day. The Small Business Game Changer Contest is back, presented by the Bozeman Area Chamber of Commerce. One local business will have the chance to win a $10,000 marketing package with MSU Athletics. Visit bozemanchamber.com slash gamechanger for details. The winner will be announced on November 13th versus Idaho. By the defense. The previous play is under review. To be expected, it'll be under review. I think no question that it was a, a fumble, though. I think maybe one question would be, did they uh, did they have clear view of uh, maybe Gunnar Talkington snagging that ball? Because it did look like he was pretty close to jumping on it before that pile came on top of that football. But we will see as they go to review here. Tire Rama and Cooper Tires are proud supporters of your MSU Bobcats. Visit TireRama.com for a complete list of stores, services, and special offers. Tire Rama, more than just a tire store. Dan, what are you seeing? Yeah, Captain Ty Okada was right, one of the first Bobcats to get to the football, no question about it. Yeah, but, and but uh, Gunnar Talkington, with the quarterback, was also right there. He was, but I, looking at this replay, Dan, I, I don't know that you can have conclusive evidence that. The possession goes to Eastern here, and, and as they continue to replay this thing. I, I would agree. You can't tell right from that at all. No. Replay that we see on the board. Credit Ty Okada. Boy, what a big game he's had. He had the blocked punt earlier. One of the captains on this defense and uh, potentially has come up with the major fumble recovery with 3.43 to go. The Cats down by four points, and they can start this drive potentially here at the 20-yard line of Eastern Washington. Callahan O'Reilly was one of the guys in there right away as well. And at that point, then, it's just a, it's just a fight. 3.43 to go in the game, and we're awaiting word on this, uh, on this review after the fumble by Eastern Washington. Montana parents know parenting isn't easy. ParentingMontana.org provides you with a way to build the skills your children need to be successful. ParentingMontana.org, tools for your child's success. 
So the longer I think this goes, the more nervous you get if you're Montana State. I think we're fairly confident that this is going to stay with Montana State. But, of course, we'll see. We've seen crazier things to be sure. The ball right now set up at the 20-yard line of Eastern Washington on the right hash mark. And with three minutes and 43 seconds to go, two timeouts, obviously plenty of time to figure out how you want to play this. Yeah, whole playbook's open here as, as you got the football and you're in the red zone. Plenty of time in really a, a great situation if you have the ball. You know, they're going to run the football and let some of this clock drain off. You never want to give too much time, even with the lead, to a, a, an Eastern Washington offense. We've got to get the ball first here. Let's see what the refs come up with. Of course, that, uh, that missed field goal at the end of that second quarter was pretty big, and uh, otherwise you could have a field goal. After review... The ruling on the field of a fumble recovered by Montana State stands. There you go. First down, Montana State. Stands not confirmed, but it'll work. And the Cats have it at the Eastern Washington 20-yard line underneath a storm of boos. That's their job, though. I think that's the right call. So 3.43 to go. Cats get a huge break. They recover a fumble. They're down by four, and they get to start in the Rose Hours red zone. Sean Chambers on the right hash mark. R.J. Fitzgerald is running back to his right. Two wide receivers left and a tight end on that side as well. Chambers steps up to the line. Crowd getting louder. Chambers back out of the shotgun. Claps his hands, takes the snap. He's running left. He gets past a Snell block. He sheds another tackler, and he eventually works his way out of bounds. Anthony Smith was there, but Chambers never went down, and he's inside the 15-yard line now. Look at a six yard, six and a half yard gain right there. Now there's an Eastern Washington player down right now. Well, hopefully he's all right. Bozeman Health injury timeout here with 3.37 to go. Rolled over onto his back now, being inspected over by the numbers. Eric Snell had a heck of a block on that play too. Yeah, and credit that offensive line. It's an outside zone play. So they're really trying to get a bunch of lateral movement and create some type of seam for Sean Chambers, and he's able to get to the edge, find a seam, he bursts through it, and then really just a load to get down. They never did tackle him, and he ends up stiff-arming stiff a guy on the way out of bounds. He's a load to bring down. That's number 54, Jaron Banks for the Eagles. That's down. One of their starting linebackers, a senior from Oregon. He was a transfer from Rice. Yeah, he's sitting up now. And he will be helped up and will walk off the field here. And a favorable down and distance here for the Bobcats. Second and a long three here. Yeah, just staying on schedule, Dan. That's a, so key as you're having positive plays, but you know, second and real manageable. Just puts that pressure on the defense when you've got your whole playbook available. There's no doubt about it, and they do. They have the whole playbook available. A lot of momentum here for this Bobcat O. It's only week four, but this is a Cats team that has been battle tested. They have battled injuries to the running back position. Tommy Mullott went out at the end of the first quarter. They trailed after one quarter of play today. They threw an interception late in this fourth quarter, but they get a fumble recovery back, and they're at the 13-yard line of the Rose Hours red zone. Here's the second and three snap. Chambers takes it. He runs up the middle. He's inside the five. He's on his feet, and he's into the end zone. Sean Chambers, touchdown MSU, and the Bobcats take the lead with 3.26 to go in the ball game. Yeah, nothing fancy there. Great tough run. Just running through contact. It was a quarterback power, I believe. They had a pulling guard. He stays nice and tight, gets nice and downhill, and uh, he really does the rest. Credit that Bobcat offensive line. Great push up front. Man, sometimes Sean Chambers looks like a high school kid against middle school kids when he's shedding some of those guys. Yeah, he does. He is a big man. Now you need this PAT, the snap and hold, and the kick is up and good. So the Bobcats do have a three-point lead up 38-35 with 3.26 to go in the ball game. but you cannot sit down here. You still can't breathe e easy with some of these big plays that the Eagles offense has put together in this game. Yeah, and that defense of Montana State has got an opportunity to catch their breath a little bit, get their legs back underneath them, and they're going to need them because that's going to be – full out battle here with three minutes and 30 seconds 
left to go in this ball game. I know you don't want to get picky about when you score touchdowns, but <laughs> it would be nice if we ran a few more seconds off the clock. How about that? I'm kind of with you there, Dan. You don't want to be picky, but it would be nice to see that thing dwindle just a little bit. But hey, this Bobcat D is more than capable. They've had plenty of stops throughout this, this day. They just got to shore things up, find a way to play some good team defense and get off the field. Or, or make them use a few timeouts too. That would have helped. Absolutely. All three timeouts in the pocket for Eastern Washington. 326 to go in the ball game. Bobcats up 38 to 35. Boy, what a ball game today. Back and forth, gritty. Just slugfest between these two rivals. Montana State snapped a seven game losing streak in the all time series against Eastern Washington last year to stay undefeated in November. Here's the kick from Glessner. Toward that left pylon into the end zone and out of the back of the end zone on two hops. And Eastern Washington will take over with 3.26 to go in the game. They'll be at their own 25 yard line, trailing 38 to 35. Sean Chambers, the go-ahead touchdown run. He's got two rushing touchdowns today. Give him nine rushing touchdowns on the season, and he's taken over as the A1 quarterback after Tommy, Tommy Ballot went down at the end of the first quarter. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers right, one to the left with a tight end there and a half back on the right hip of Talkington. He takes the snap on the left hash mark, fires to the outside, and it's caught by Roberson on the left sideline right at the first down marker. He gets out of bounds at the 35-yard line, first down Eagles. And quite a bit of space down here. He's working on Simeon Woodard. Playing some, what looks to be some off man. A lot of space, pretty easy rhythm throw for Talkington out there on the edge. First and 10 from their own 35. Takes the shotgun snap, it was a little bit low. He gets hit as he delivers over the middle. Incomplete, what a shot in the backfield against Talkington. He hit him right in the chest, good clean hit. Oh man, very close. Ready short was probably about three or four yards away from that. Very close for being an opportunistic turnover for the Bobcats. Well, this is the time if the Bobcat defensive front could just dig one out and get a sack here. Sebastian Valdez, and what a clean hit too. No worries of a flag on that kind of shot. Here's the snap on second and 10. Fires into the flat over on the right side. Caught by the halfback. He is tackled in the open field. James Campbell takes him out with a shoestring tackle, and it's a one yard loss on the right side. Yeah, it wasn't pretty there. That was an, uh, just a little flare screen out of the backfield. And uh, James Campbell coming from his cornerback position, closing a lot of ground to try and make a tackle. Wasn't pretty, but he got the guy down. Third and 11, and now Cat Country making some noise on the far side. Takes the snap, looking to throw. He's sacked in the backfield. Brody Greeby, an arm tackle in the backfield at the 31-yard line. Yeah, and who else than the preseason all-conference pick? Y you could tell, man, he's operating out there with a with a elbow brace, doing everything he can, bringing up a fourth down here, fourth and 14. Eastern's not using a timeout. They've got all three, 2-10 remaining in the game. Shotgun snap on fourth and 14. Talkington steps up into a good pocket, fires over the middle. It is, is it caught? No, it's loose, incomplete. Firing over the middle into Bobcat territory and Montana State had, Interception, Montana State picked it off. Yeah, they say he caught it there. This will be an interesting review. I, I know uh, it was not an Eastern Washington catch. There's three white jerseys around the receiver. Rolling on the field is interception. First down, Montana State. Wow, what a play. He stepped up and tried to take a big shot. Really, though, you'd rather knock it down because he'd be a little deeper into Eastern Washington territory. <laughs> yeah, tell that to those DBs. I won't. <laughs> Taking a look at the replay here. He had it in his hands and it got ripped out and then it popped out free. I don't know why Eastern Washington fans are booing here. I mean, it was in his hands for a very split second. There's no chance that was a completion. You, you got to complete the catch. Not even close. No way that was a catch. I'm not really sure why Eastern Washington fans are so up in arms. And I don't know who had the interception. It's Danny Olu and Lakepa who got credit for it, but he was one of three white jerseys there. Ty Okada in on the play again, too. We've been calling his name all day, and now they're going to go ahead and review. There's no way that was a catch. He never came down to the ground with it. I don't think he did, but you got to control it, and I, yeah, I don't know. 
There is no timeout on the field. The previous play is under review. I mean, we've seen this replay a couple of times now. He never got to the ground. He had it in his hands for a split second. He never got to the ground with that ball in his hands. And as we mentioned, there were three Bobcats there. I saw Ty Okada and Danny Alua Lakepa who got into the play. And uh, now they will go back and review it. That's fine. Go ahead and take a look. But, I mean, I didn't think there was anything that was really even questionable. You got to make a football. You got to come down on the, on the field with it, Dan. Well, the, the fact that they called it an interception, you need, uh, you know, the old term undisputed evidence to overturn it so and I don't, I don't see anything on the replay that i can tell and already the fumble recovery was a, a review that stood you know kata was there pottinger was the third guy that was there yeah U lua lakepa definitely got it. it it was in the hands of the receiver he got twisted down before he hit the ground it got knocked loose and lua lakepa got the tip he kind of tipped it to himself and then pulled it into his chest while on his back the Bozeman Come On In Hotel and Suites is a proud sponsor of MSU Athletics and the Montana State Alumni Association. The Come On In allows you to escape the ordinary while allowing or enjoying their numerous hotel and guest room amenities. Visit comeonin.com to book your stay today. He got a toe down for a split second and then went face first down into the turf as that ball then popped out. I thought that thing started to pop out before he hit the ground. Very difficult replay to see and read. And as Dan mentioned a moment ago, I mean, the fact that it was called an interception on the field is the big portion of this play. Could be the one that seals it. There's 2.04 on the clock. Montana State leads 38-35. What a sequence at the end of this game. Mon Montana State throws a fourth down interception into the end zone down four. Then they force a fumble and they get the recovery at the 20. Sean Chambers, a tremendous run into the end zone, his second rushing touchdown of the day. He's got a passing, passing touchdown as well. That gives the Bobcats the lead. And now on fourth down after a Brody Greeby sack and a big Sebastian Valdez pressure earlier in the series, they have a contested interception deep into Bobcat territory where they would potentially be knocking on the door uh, of field goal territory, although they'd still need a few more yards to get there. They are now reviewing the play to see not if it was an interception, but if Eastern Washington had caught like that the, ball. Looks like the Bobcat defense is heading back out there. Yep. Nolan Um was the intended receiver. I to see this replay one more time. He got up in the air, he caught it, then got twisted down into the ground and the ball popped out. Yeah, the Bobcat defense is on the field right now. Well, we'll see. We're still waiting a word from the official who's got the headset on down there. And the Eastern Washington offense is coming on the field now. The official is still with the headset on. I don't know if both teams are just coming out and assuming that that's the situation. Well, the head coach has got notification from the sideline did, officials. Okay. okay. So it sounds like they're gonna overturn this. We sounded very sure that there was no way that was a catch, but I mean, he must've gotten twisted down onto the ground still with it and then had it pop out. I thought on the initial replay and it's certainly live that he never had it all the way even to the ground. Yeah, I stand corrected. I was very confident he did not catch that ball. So again, both teams appear to know that this is going to be overturned. It's going to be ruled a catch, which, by the way, is a remarkable catch in among three defenders. I'm not sure that those uh, three defenders could have done much more once they got to that spot. Yeah, really good throw, really good catch. A lot of white jerseys he threw that and split the, split the defenders. They're probably just trying to figure out exactly where he caught it and what the time is on the clock. Yeah, I think you're right. So as we look deeper at the replay, it does look like he had it, had his knee down with that ball in his hands, and then his head came down. And uh, I mean, but still, it kind of looks like the ground knocked that ball out of his hands. We've got a, a tough angle at the uh, at the replay, so kind of at the mercy of everything else. You at home, if you've got this game synced up with us, you actually might have a, a better view uh, of that replay. But we don't actually have a monitor in the booth, so 
We're just trying to screen tap some of the other booths up here in the first interstate booth press box. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you as part of the Toyota Rewards Program. You can win exclusive swag throughout the year, along with receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle in to be serviced at your local Montana Toyota dealers. To join the program, visit msubobcats.com slash Toyota Rewards to register. Toyota, proud to be a part After of Bobcat review, Athletics. the ruling on the field stands. Interception, Montana State, first down. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what... Um, Dan, I, I don't know what they were doing offensively and defensively there. Um, yeah, just interesting. That was an interesting chain of events there. I don't, oh that's my, all I can say oh, for you guys that are listening. Oh, my gosh. You talk about your, your heart going up and down in your throat. And yeah. Eastern Washington chanting FCC violations as they did not like that call. But, again, he didn't complete that catch. I, I thought initially we – I mean, he came down on a knee, but he did not complete that whole catch as it popped out, and Danny Alou Lakepa credited with the big interception with some help from Ty Okada and Tyson Pottinger. First downs, first downs, first downs. With 2.04 to go, Montana State takes over at their own 40-yard line, up 38 to 35 over Eastern Washington, trying to win just their fourth game on the road against Eastern Washington all time. Here's the snap. It's kept by Chambers running right outside the hash marks, and he slides down and is hit again as he was giving himself up. Not quite the same play we saw Tommy Malott get hurt on, but he's given himself up. I thought you couldn't touch a quarterback when they're sliding like that. Yeah, that, that one was a little bit different as he was running right to the sideline, and uh, I think that one was a little bit more bang-bang, but I'm with you. Anytime that they're going to give themselves up, you, you know, you got to got to stop when you're on defense. And that's the first of the three timeouts used by Eastern Washington in the second half. Not only is dairy delicious, but it also promotes health as well. Just three servings of dairy a day improves overall wellness and may reduce the risk of developing some chronic diseases. It's a quick, convenient, and economic way to make sure you are staying strong and healthy on and off the field. So Montana State, after that three-yard gain by Sean Chambers, he's up to 144 yards. Elijah Elliott, 141 yards. And the Cats today, 327 yards on the ground. Just a miraculous effort by Chambers and Elliott with Malott out today. Tommy Malott got three carries for 10 yards before he got hurt. Yeah, I credit this Bobcat offensive line. They have done a tremendous job today. Really good running lanes, and it all starts up front. And now they're trying to close this thing. Justice Perkins, the center, leading the way. Under two minutes to play in the game. Shotgun snap. Chambers hands it off. Elliott runs left. He's got space across the 50-yard line. He's got a first down, and he spun down into Eagle territory up to the 42-yard line. First interstate bank, first down with under two minutes to go, and the clock running. What a just a burst of a run. I mean, he was such a decisive run. He gets to the edge. He puts his foot in the ground, finds a seam, and just burst through that hole and then makes one guy miss in traffic. What a what an awesome day. What a confidence builder day for Elijah Elliott. Just incredible stuff. Again, I've said it before. I think it's worth saying again as there, there was an injury to one of the Eagles in the backfield, so a Bozeman Health injury timeout here. The siren is a fire truck. That's on the road. That has nothing to do with the injury here. Um, but point being, I mean, with all the injuries, Afonso, Williams, Sumner, White all going down this year and now here's Elijah Elliott with 141 yards credit the coaching staff for being able to recruit this type of depth at the running back position yeah absolutely doing a really good job creative play calling but again it goes back to that offensive line what a, a tremendous uh, performance today they've done it you know week in and week out that is the identity of Bobcat offense is running the football so coach Brian Armstrong who, who uh, coaches that offensive line kudos to him and his crew I got a chance to run into him in the hallway yesterday. He just said he just felt so good about his unit as a whole. Um, you know, they may not be the biggest and necessarily the, the most talented that they've had here, but he just felt great about them and couldn't say enough good things about the cohesion and just how hard they work and how good of kids they are. So the clock should start, and now another timeout by Eastern Washington. Rush Reimer out on the left side, his sophomore from Washington. J.T. Reed, the left guard from San Jose. Justice Perkins in the middle, a legacy kid with his two brothers on the team. Cole Sane, a California native. Marcus Weir, the guy who flipped over, and the Billings, Montana native. I mean, that crew has opened up some big holes, and they've made these guys look good. Yeah, credit this O-line. They've done a great job, and it really does. It all starts up front. When you get into these big sky games, especially these grinders, 
That's where it makes a difference. You, you got to win in the trenches, and they've done that today on the offensive side of the ball. Oh, man, it was a real pleasure talking to Justice Perkins on the radio show this last week. And, you know, he, he talked about it. When he came in as a walk-on, he was nervous. He thought he might not be able to make it and and uh, and be a D1 player. But here he is. He's the sophomore starting center on a team that has a 38-35 lead with 152 to go at Eastern Washington in the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Snap. Chambers keeps it. He makes a man miss in the backfield. Turns upfield across the 30-yard line, and he slides down to stay inbounds. A smart play up to the 29-yard line of the Eagles. Hey, what a smart play. I mean, it's very easy in the heat of the moment to maybe – uh, you know, run out of bounds or not be thinking about it, but really good job. Sean Chambers, he's played a ton of football. Credit to this kid, credit to the offensive line. Uh, you know, Tommy goes down and Sean steps right in and, and is able to make plays and offense doesn't miss a beat. And that should be the dagger with yep. one timeout left. Victory, Eastern Washington. Victory not formation it. in place. There you go. So that will do it. Sean Chambers with the big run to get into Eagle territory, and now they'll be able to take the knee, and the Bobcats will earn two straight victories in Cheney. Stamp and a knee. And a timeout by Eastern Washington, their final. 116 remaining in the ball game. Montana State up 38-35. Willie Patterson turning over to the far sideline and a sea of gold t-shirts pumping up the Bobcat fans who have made the trip, and they're making a chant now over on the far side. Yeah, and Willie's a he's a uh, uh, excuse me a Washington native, so you know that for the handful of these Washington guys on the Montana State roster, this means a whole lot to come to Cheney and get a win. Man, two in a row. Woo. Four program wins on the road against Eastern Washington, two straight. Snap and a knee, and about one ten left, and now some pushing and shoving in the middle there. I'm surprised this game hasn't gotten even chippier after that tough call and a tough hit against Tommy Malott, and it's R.J. Fitzgerald who's jumping in the middle and shoving all the cats back. Yeah, that was fairly interesting. I think I saw one of the Eastern D linemen roll on the snap on the victory formation, jump into somebody's legs and roll. Yeah, you don't like seeing that kind of thing. No. Yeah, there's uh, been a few questionable plays. Let's leave it at that. 40 seconds left. They'll take another snap here, ready to take the knee. He does, and Montana State's going to come away with a victory today. 38-35, back and forth affair. Sean Chambers, the game-winning rushing touchdown. Bobcats lost their starting quarterback, Tommy Mallott, early in the first quarter. Chambers completed that drive with a touchdown, and the Bobcats have won on the road on the Red Inferno again. Yeah, look, two, two times in a row, uh, I mean, you can't say enough about this team. They battled a lot of adversity today. Things didn't go your way, but, um, man, what a testament to the, the grit and the leadership of this team, finding a way to pull out a win on the road. Triple zeros on the clock, and the Cats have officially won it, 38-35. to 35. They go to 3-1. and one. They are 1-0 and oh in Big Sky play. They send Eastern Washington to 1-2, 0-1 oh and one in conference play. And man, we found out what this Bobcat team is made of today with all the adversity they had. Sean Chambers, 144 yards on the ground. Elijah Elliott, 141 yards on the ground. 327 rushing yards for the Bobcats today. Yeah, anytime that you have two rushers over 100 yards, I'd love to see the stats on that, but man, <laughs> your, your chances of winning a football game are very high. And don't forget this defense right in the middle of this game. They gave up some big scoring plays by Eastern Washington. It was a tough kind of sketchy situation there. It looked like they were on their heels, and Eastern Washington was going to get whatever they wanted, but instead Montana State's defense stood up tall in the middle of this game, and a uh, little, I don't know, controversy here at the end. Eastern Washington's kind of milling around on the right hash mark, looking uh, over at the Bobcats sideline, and now Aaron Best, the head coach, is trying to shoe them off. Uh, I, I don't know, something's going on down there. There was the cheap shot that took Tommy Mallott out of this ball game. There was some pushing and shoving on the second to last knee of this game, and Eastern Washington is not happy about things, and now they're starting to focus on their own stuff as Montana State goes over to Cat Country, which is all filled up on the far side, and uh, they're cheering on it and celebrating with their fans for a hard-fought win today. Yeah. Yep, I'm watching Coach Brian Armstrong. He's got his arms around a, the uh, running back for, for Eastern Washington, uh, Micah Smith, who had an awesome day, but he's the guy that fumbled there late uh, in their own territory to give the Bobcats a, another opportunity to score, and uh, that's a tough thing for that kid. He had a great game, but he'll learn from it. 
Huge win for these Bobcats on the road. Yeah, he's having a nice conversation and a hug with Danny Olua Lakepa. You can tell things are a little funky. The sheriff who's on the field kind of beelined over there initially when he saw them talking and then kind of slowed up once he realized they were high-fiving each other. So, yeah, there was definitely some bad blood right at the end of that game and throughout this contest. And Aaron Best holding his team back while he allows Montana State to walk into the locker room right now. So, yeah, this game was right on the edge of becoming very combustible at the end of this contest. Yeah, a lot of emotions there late. A lot of emotions. Just want to hightail it into the, the locker room, shower up, and get on the plane. And a nice job by all the leaders, too. The coaches, RJ Fitzgerald, these guys jumped in. They threw water on the situation, didn't let anything escalate. Not that it got too bad, but it was certainly a situation where things could have escalated if cooler heads hadn't prevailed. And just get an opportunity to see some of the leadership on both sides. All right, we've got a lot to get to. What a win for Montana State. They begin Big Sky play with a 38 to 35 victory over the Eagles. Their fourth all-time win in program history at Eastern Washington in a, uh, an all-time series that dates back to the late 40s. And the Bobcats have won it today, coming from behind multiple times to win it today. We'll take a break. Again, your final score, Bobcats 38, Eagles 35. This is Montana State football from Learfield.
Maple Hay with a heck of a victory tonight. They win 38-35 over Eastern Washington. Montana State coming back in this game multiple times. Sean Chambers, the game-winning touchdown at the end of this contest. Danny Alua-Lakepa credited with the dagger interception that had been reviewed. He was one of three guys in on a big pass breakup on fourth down that was nearly hauled in and by uh, one of the uh, running or uh, wide receivers for uh, for Eastern Washington. It was a, a heck of a play by those three guys, and this was a, a defensive performance that was kind of up and down. All right, let's go down to Dan Davies now. Dan Davies with head coach Brent Vegan. Not a football game, and, and what a great, great finish for the Bobcats, but your offense and defense rose the challenges at the end of that fourth quarter. Just spectacular. Yeah, you know, you don't write the script like that, and that's that's what football is all about. You just uh, take the twists and turns and, and ultimately and that's that's willing to have it, you know, and add that the ball in on offense, turnover on defense, and then we're able to push it in and, and turn them. And, um, you know, I, I can't say enough about just our willingness to hang in there and, and the type of win that uh, you can really build off of. Now, there is going to be plenty of things. I know we're going to look at that uh, film at and say, Okay, we need to improve here, improve there. Um, but, you know, you, you, you win a game on the road, um, a place that's really hard to win. Um, we can't take that for granted. And uh, any update on I know he was in street clothes there on the sideline. Yeah, I'd imagine, uh, you know, I think what happened, he got hit up, hit up top, hit his head real hard on the, um, on the turf. You know, that's usually not uh, a real good deal. So, I mean, we'll get... Uh, We'll get more, more more information tomorrow and into, into Monday, I would imagine, on that. Your offensive line, two 100-yard rushers in, in this game. They must add a heck of a game. Yeah, we've, we've been playing well up front um, all season, so that's nothing new. I think we're uh, we're an athletic bunch that isn't afraid to be physical, um, you know, and, and playing, playing fast as far as I can see it. So, you know, we need to keep, uh, you know, playing behind them. They'll set the tone for us on offense, um, no different than our defensive front. And that defensive front got a huge sack there towards the end of the game that kind of tipped things over. Yeah, yeah, we put them in that long yard situation. Um, you know, obviously the re the review and, and the interception and all that was uh, long, and they got it right. You know, and that's that's what replay is about. You, you get it right, and we had a couple of them. We had a fumble recovery in that, and I, I appreciate them taking their time to, to get it right. And, um, you know, uh, it was a big play. You know, fourth and long is a tough conversion, and they almost did it, but uh, we came up on the right side of it. All right, that was uh, Brent Vegan along with uh, Dan Davies. We appreciate him uh, grabbing uh, Brent and having some good words there. And boy, you could, you could, Brent's pretty, pretty chill kind of when he's talking to the media. You know, he's, he's pretty even keeled, but you could just hear the undercurrent of excitement. And why not? Oh, what, a, what a win. Yeah, absolutely. No matter how long you, you've been in the industry, I'm sure he, he still celebrates these wins. I mean, it is a fun thing to come on the road and, you know, face some adversity. And it's a conference rival and a tough place to play. And you go get her done. I got the win. All right, we'll take a break. We got plenty to get to. Dean Davis will be uh, back up at the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth in a little bit. We'll get you all the stats, and we'll break down this ball game as Montana State wins its day 38-35. This is the Rib and Chop House postgame show. Bobcats win it. This is Montana State football from Learfield.
instant classic on the Inferno at Eastern Washington. At Montana's Rib and Chop House, our staff is dedicated to creating extraordinary experiences that ri raise the bar in each of our communities, enjoy premium steaks, fresh seafood, and award-winning baby back ribs. We look forward to sharing a little Rocky Mountain hospitality with you. All right, let's take a look at our town pump uh, quarter stats, uh, and well, game stats, as Montana State again wins it today, 38 to 35. Cats had 28 first downs. Eastern Washington had 15 in this game. Bobcats had 35 or 355 yards on 60 carries today. Eastern Washington 148 yards on the ground on 29 carries. Montana State between their two quarterbacks 10 of 20 through the air, 111 yards for Eastern Washington. Gunner Talkington 201 yards, 16 of 26 with one interception in this ball game. So overall, Montana State 80 plays, 466 yards. Eastern Washington 55 plays, 300. 49 yards in this ball game. Montana State was able to recover that late fumble, which was crucial, put them at the 20-yard line with under four minutes to go, and uh, they ended up punching in for the score after that. Cats went five of seven in the Rose Hours red zone today. They were very effective down there, which was a point of emphasis, part of the reason Sean Chambers came here from Wyoming, and he, he was able to punch them through in some of those big moments. Yeah, he really was, and it's really no secret when they've gotten into the red zone who's <laughs> yeah. going who's gonna to carry the football. But, sh I mean, they found a way to, to uh, get creative and, again, credit that offensive line who's done such a good job. Uh, the running game today individually, Sean Chambers, 26 carries, 144 yards and two touchdowns. He's got nine rushing touchdowns now. And I mean, he just looks so much bigger than some of these guys down there. Yeah, and he he's one of those guys that not only is he big, but he's got some length to him. Yeah. And, and so I just can – you know, speak from experience, tackling a guy like that, it's just, it's almost awkward. You're not exactly <laughs> sure, you know, do you, do you, do you tackle him low? Well, he's kind of got some long legs and he's going to, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to get run over by him. And so it's just, it's an interesting situation, but he's done a, a really, really good job. But again, credit that offensive line uh, that are opening holes for that run game. Elijah Elliott, 17 carries, 141 yards. Just incredible what he's able to do. And, I mean, some of that wasn't just the trickery. I mean, those were just some straight-up run calls, and he found those seams. Yeah, and he looks comfortable, and, you know, I'm sure that they'll give him uh, a lot more touches. It, it's a nice little compliment, the two of them, between Sean Chambers and then Elijah Elliott because they really are entirely different runners. Um, and so it's a nice compliment. They found a good rhythm. And good to have two 100-yard rushers. That says a lot about your offensive line and uh, your commitment to run the football. That's how you win football games. Yeah, nearly 150 yards between the two guys. And it does sound like Lane Sumner's got a chance to get back next week. And now all of a sudden, obviously, the Malad injury could be fairly serious. I, I would not guess that he'd be back. But that's just a pure guess. Who knows? We'll see. He'll go through all the evaluations. But either way, imagining he's out, you got Chambers in there along with a potential Sumner and Elijah Elliott. Well, now you're feeling a little bit more comfortable about your running game going into that UC Davis game. Yeah, it just gives you one more guy in, the, in your stable, which is uh, important, especially given the fact that they're going to stick to running the football, and that's how they're going to continue to dominate and win games. Um, and they obviously have the ability to throw it. Sean Chambers can do that. But when you have more hands to touch the football, um, I it's important because it takes a toll on you. How about R.J. Fitzgerald? Two carries, 13 yards, his first career touchdown. It comes in his sixth season in Bozeman from walk-on to captain to legacy number to now touchdown score. And, man, I don't think he even touched the red turf by the time he got to back to the sideline. He was gliding getting back. Yeah, no doubt. And I tell you what, that was a really good run. That wasn't a, you know, just a, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust type deal. He, he made a guy miss, you know, half hurdled, showed some really good balance and some quickness and good vision. And, um, Good to get that guy in the end zone. You need those fullbacks to, to get some pay dirt every now and again. <laughs> One touchdown, six years. That's it. That's all you need for, for the breath for the, uh, that young man. Uh, through the air, Willie Patterson led the way, receiving five catches, 45 yards, had a touchdown. Also drew a couple of pass interference penalties that were really crucial in this game. So that stood up strong. Derek Snell, one catch for 24. Cleve Ann Thomas, one catch, 17. Elijah Elliott, Elliott, one catch, 15. Ravi Alston, one catch, 10 yards. Also had a huge block deep uh, down the field on the Elijah Elliott touchdown run early in this game. That was another big, big block from that young man. Yeah, downfield, uh, those receivers did a great job. If you're going to commit to running the football, you need that type of blocking on the edge. It's unselfish. Uh, there's nothing real, you know, sexy about the entire thing, but I can tell that Coach Udy, that's a big thing for him. He, those receivers, if they're going to play, 
uh, on Saturdays. They are going to be capable blockers, and they're going to be hustle guys in that way. And uh, credit to those guys blocking on the perimeter. And then finally on the defensive end, three sacks in this ball game. Sebastian Valdez had a big hit on a pass that was a, a good clean hit, and it's so hard in today's day and age, which is fine, but it's hard to get those big hits and not draw a, a penalty flag. And he hit Talkington right in the chest, shoulder first, didn't land on top of him, and was able to deliver that blow with no worries of a flag. That's such a smart play for just a sophomore. Yeah, yeah, and, and credit to that defensive line. Uh, you want to get to that quarterback probably a little more often than they did today, but – they were timely. Three sacks, that's a big deal. Um, I mean, you are you heard Coach Vegan say it. The offensive line, the defensive line, they are your, uh, your you know, trendsetters, your uh, tone setters, rather, for your entire football team. And so it was good to see that defensive line get some timely pressure and some sacks. And Sebastian Valdez uh, leading the way and Brody Greeby getting in on it and Ben Seymour and uh, did a really, really good job. It's good to see him get back in the sack category. Yeah, Brody Greeby had the, the arm sack, basically took Talkington down with one hobbled arm a, a, in that final series that set up that long fourth uh, fourth down for, for uh, Eastern Washington. So some big plays there as the Cats take it 38-35 to 35 against Eastern Washington. We'll take a break. Plenty more to get to as Montana State starts Big Sky play with a 1-0 and o record. The Ribbon Chop House postgame show continues. Cats win 38-35 over the Eagles. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Wow. 
Montana State winning it today, 38-35 against Eastern Washington. We're back on the Raven Chop House post-game show. Cats taking a hard-fought victory today. Montana's Raven Chop House has been serving Rocky Mountain communities for over 20 years. Our ability to grow has come through our commitment to Rocky Mountain Hospitality, a concept which incorporates a casual attitude with our commitment to loyalty, safety, service, and quality food. We hope You'll be our guest at one of our Montana locations soon. Also, if you're looking for some more college football action today after uh, our broadcast, you can check out the College Football Blitz for free by going to the Varsity Network app. It's the college football audio version of the NFL Red Zone channel every Saturday from noon to midnight Eastern. Just search College Football Blitz on the Varsity Network app. I right, will take, uh, before we get to a break, uh, let's uh, get to our station identification. We will we'll pause now. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Bobcat Football. Montana State winning it today, 38-35. to 35. Keaton Gologli alongside uh, Mikey Ryder and Dan Davies, and he will join us after this timeout. We'll take one more break. Montana State winning it today, 38-35 over Eastern Washington. More of the Ribbon Chop House postgame show after this. This is Montana State football from Learfield. Winning 38-35 to 35 over Eastern Washington. We're in the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth. I'm Keaton Gillogley alongside Mikey Ryder. Joined now by our sideline reporter as well, Dan Davies, up in the booth. Man, Dan, that was a heck of a game. <laughs> and, you know, you, you had the front row seat to the crowd that was here. That whole section on the opposite side of this field was filled up with Bobcat fans. How loud were they in this game? Yeah, Bobcat fans uh, travel so well, and especially here. And it's been a, a uh, back-to-back fun trips out here for the Bobcat fans to to win out here in Easton. Yeah, they were they were a factor. You could, you know, the third down thing when you know the Bobcats are on defense, they're yelling and screaming and trying to make some noise and and really support the football team. And they really did that this afternoon. What was it? Uh, what was it like on that sideline after the R.J. Fitzgerald touchdown? Yeah, I mean they he, he is such a fan favorite and such a, a, f- a f- special guy on this football team and. We, you guys talk about it all the time, you know, to the walk-on, to the captain, to the legacy number, and, and no one appreciates that more than R.J. Fitzgerald for sure. Yeah, pretty pretty impressive stuff, and, and that was just one of uh, four rushing touchdowns from Montana State. And Dan, down there you can really see how hard that guy, those guys of the offensive line are working. What did you see from the offensive line today? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, Coach Began talked about a little bit, but those guys, uh, you know, have to be on the same page, and they have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing, and and uh, they don't like it when the quarterback gets hit or the running back gets hit. They're gonna they're gonna support those guys and help them up and that type of deal. But uh, that's where it all starts with with those guys, and and uh, you've got you've got to give them a new credit. A little different look out there this, uh, tonight at right guard, you know, with um, um, anyway. Uh, a different different look for this uh, for the offensive run. So and very effective. Yeah, important is uh, Montana State put up 327 yards of offense on the ground alone. I mean, this is impressive stuff. And Elijah Elliott was really really impressive in this ball game. How is this kid as a fifth string running back on this team? Well, and you, if you look back, he really hasn't had many opportunities to to kind of shine, so to speak. And man, when the spotlight hit him, he made some big runs and tough runs after the hit and just kept things going and he, he's got such quick feet when he gets in there he can change direction do that jump cut and uh, he, he's a tough out when he's uh, in, in space no doubt about it Mikey I mean, you were a player you, you played in this rivalry a lot and you know obviously coming here last year and staying undefeated in conference play was a, a, a monumental win and now you get another win to open up conference play here. It's a different looking team, but uh, this is always a tough place to play. Give us a feel for just the emotion to be able to come in here and win two straight games at Eastern Washington. Yeah, I mean the fact that first off scheduling wise that that you drew the short straw not <laughs> to come here two years in a row. Uh, I mean it's hard to do every other year, and so it says a lot to me about um, you know this team. It's uh, specifically with what they found here in the last couple games, just a ton of adversity. I mean. Coming up here is hard. Playing on the road in the big sky is hard. Um, but they found themselves down some guys. They lose a starting quarterback. Uh, a, a lot of adversity today. I mean, a lot of it. And uh, scored late. And they just found a way to hang in there, as Coach Vegan said. And, and it, uh, to me, that all boils down to good leadership. That's uh, within your guys' uh, you know, locker room and who you have uh, speaking into the rest of the team. So kudos to this team. What a, a fun victory to get on the road. And, um, open up conference play, and we know that these guys are excited to get back to Bobcat Stadium here a week from today. And, and Dan, I mean, I, it just it feels like we really figured out who this team was. Those first three games, you know, you saw some good wins uh, against those first two opponents. The Oregon State game was what it was, a good Pac-12 opponent in that contest. But a, as Mikey mentioned, to face this type of adversity, be down as many times as they were in this game, to throw an interception on fourth down in the final four minutes and then get another turnover to come back and win this ball game, another long review, it, it really feels like we, we figured out how mentally tough this squad is. Well, you know, the emotional flow in this game was <laughs> was dramatic, you yeah. know, with for both teams, and you know, when Montana State got out there defensively, just didn't have an answer to start with. And the start of the second half, uh, get a three and out, go down and score, and think you got things figured out, and then boom, boom, Eastern does what they do. They go down and, and score. They're offensive, just a powerhouse, and uh, and then it was just a blow by blow deal here at the, as the fourth quarter came to an end and had. Montana State was standing at the end. Yep, no doubt. I mean, give us another sense too, just of what the kind of the the energy was on that sideline after turning that ball over on the on the fourth down play. I mean, that, it's easy to fold right there, but they did make a play. I mean, what did you see? Were guys staying up? Were anybody trying to pick each other up? I mean, what was that energy on the sideline after that big turnover? I mean, you, you don't often see back to back turnovers like that. <laughs> Interception in the end zone, and then a fumble, and you get it right back, and you got great field position and. And uh, you go in and score and, and take the lead. It's uh, that stuff doesn't happen. But I can tell you, over the years, years and years and years of Eastern Washington and Montana State games, they've a lot of them come down to this deal. And it's <laughs> a, and and quite frankly, Montana State has been on the short end of, of a few of those here, right, Mikey? Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's about time the tide had turned here a little bit. Yeah, I've, I remember one very vividly in 2009. And they were in, it was normal green grass and grass, not turf at that time. <laughs> and there was in the corner, Everett Gilbert caught a touchdown pass and got a foot in. And they, that was kind of before a lot of the replay. And the next day in the paper, they caught a picture of it. And sure enough, they showed his foot and his foot's in bounds. We, we lose. We lost by, I think it was three or four points. And what would have been the difference? So uh, that's kind of the nature of these matchups, rivalry games up here in Cheney. There's just something special that always brews when these two teams get together. Well, in the national championship year, 1984, Montana State had 499 yards of total offense, and we lose by five points, and uh, it was it was heartbreaking. Yeah, yep. That's these these matchups are something else, and that's why you play in this league. 
and it's you know it it was like this last year it's it was like this this year it's going to be like it years to come that's how it is these are good matchups so now we kind of look forward a little bit who knows what the prognosis on tommy Malott's going to be i mean that was a pretty serious hit he was down for quite some time came back out and was able to at least to walk around in street clothes as dan reported in this game but looking ahead to, to sean chambers uh, dan first of all i mean what did you see from chambers today and, and kind of what do you expect from him moving forward here well i i saw i saw no nerves yeah. I, I mean he's a veteran guy we've talked about it throughout the broadcast and you know he's he's been in live bullets a lot and uh he, he, he did what he had to do today and, and uh, you know, didn't turn the ball over. Um, got first downs when he needed to. Got extra yards after the first hit and uh, led his team to victory here. And, and, you know, when you lose your quarterback early in a game like that, you don't know how it's going to go. So you've got to give Sean Chambers a lot, a lot of credit to, to you know, l lace up his boots and let's go. Yeah, and he, I tell you what, he looked comfortable more in a rhythm once he was getting every snap, right? I mean, that's like a quarterback. It's like a point guard, right? When you get those touches and you, you're able to get in a rhythm, both good and bad, um, it's hard sometimes to get in when you're kind of in one play, out the other, in for two plays, out for two plays. And so you could see him kind of settle in once he got a crack at it and got the ball in his hands every single play. It, I think it's instinct. As you said, he's played so many plays, and it, it just kind of took over. So looking ahead quickly, we'll get a couple of very quick thoughts on uh, UC Davis as uh, we take a look at the uh, at the Vision Thompson, uh, uh, Vance Thompson Vision uh, forward look to the next opponent in terms of UC Davis. This is a team that's got their greatest running back in program history who just set the career uh, rushing record. Excuse me, that's uh, Alonzo Gillum Jr. So he just had that uh, that big uh, marker last week. And then their quarterback, Miles Hastings, you know, he's up near 800 yards already uh, through the air. They're taking on Weber State. That game's going to get going in uh, in like three hours. So that game hasn't gotten going yet. But this is going to be a real tough matchup when the Cats get home for this matchup on Saturday. Yeah, and I know that they're going to be happy to have it at home. But I, I will tell you, UC Davis, they're always they're a physical team. Um, always got some pretty good size. You know, Coach Dan Hawkins, he's a veteran coach. He's been around at Boise State, at Colorado. Um, his son is their offensive coordinator. They, they do a really good job. They're going to be disciplined. They'll be ready to go, be prepared for Bobcat Stadium, but uh, advantage Bobcats is they're at home. Yeah, no, no question. And, and it's, you know, schedule-wise, you look down the road, you get not only UC Davis at home, you get Weber at home, and you don't play Sacramento State. So fairly favorable situation there. And uh, Montana State uh, has Idaho State the following week after UC Davis. So there's uh, there's – Good things down the road for Montana State schedule-wise. But you had to have this one, and they did. A hell of a win for Montana State on the road at Eastern Washington, winning it today 38-35. to All right, we will uh, take a break. Dan, thanks for roaming the sidelines and bringing all the information. Uh, we needed you down there today. There was a lot. I, I got some good sun on the sideline. It was a beautiful day down there. <laughs> yes, this is that sweet spot. And uh, next time we're on the air, it's going to be October. We're into the second month of the season for that 8:15 kickoff. We'll be on the air at 7 p.m. Mountain Time for the Cats and uh, UC Davis back at Bobcat Stadium in front of another 20,000, no doubt, in uh, in Bozeman. All right, more of the Ribbon Chop House postgame show coming up after this timeout. Montana State wins it 38-35 over Eastern Washington. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
back of the Ribbon Chop House postgame show. Montana State winning it today, 38-35 to on the road at Eastern Washington. They doused the Inferno with some water in a wild game today, and we have an opportunity now to hear how some of the key plays sounded. The highlights for the ball game today presented by First Security Bank. So let's go to the uh, montage of the First Security Bank highlights of the game. So we will get to those in just a split second. It was a heck of a back and forth matchup today as Montana State gets the win. And uh, we saw all different types of play. We saw a punt block today. We saw an interception. We saw the fumble recovery. Sean Chambers some touchdowns. for R.J. Fitzgerald some touchdowns. Willie Patterson got another TD today. I mean, uh, Mikey, this was just a game that felt like it had everything in oh, it. A lot of up and down, but you're right. It was special teams play. It was offense. It was defense. Uh, emotionally, up and down. There's no doubt about it. I mean, the, the start to this game with uh, Eastern Washington picking up not one but two huge rushing plays for touchdowns, I mean, they were basically just they, – they made one guy miss, and this, it just felt like a clear path for 50 yards to get to the end zone on those first two touchdowns. Yeah, they, it was concerning just run fit-wise. You know, from a defensive guy, you look at it and just some, you know, matching guy for guy, uh, it looked to be outflanked and out of position, and um, – and so it was really good to see him get that remedied and get things right and the ship righted and uh, enough to get the job done and get the W. Yeah, the middle of this game was very, very impressive uh, from this defense. And, and it, I think it goes to kind of the mental aspect of this team again when you think about how much they got gashed at the start to bounce back and make those big stops. I mean, the adjustments to come back and make those type of in-games adjustments. Credit the defensive coordinator, Willie Mack Garza, and this whole crew for being able to figure out how to fix that on the fly and really come up with some dominant plays. Yeah, no doubt. Those in-game adjustments are huge. And just confidence-wise, the ability to bounce back and move on to the next play uh, despite the adversity, play after play, and early adversity on the road. Uh, again, that just says a ton about the leadership within that locker room. Yeah, and I, I think uh, you got to give this whole staff so much credit because it's not like you can just come in and, and just hand the ball off to one guy. You can't just rely on a Lance McCutcheon. You can't just rely on a Troy Anderson. You can't rely on just one all-star on this team. The personnel of this team has changed every single week. It's going to change again when we get next next week back home against UC Davis, so you have to figure those things out. That's so difficult to do for a staff. Yeah, no doubt, and I, I think they've done a good job of turning it into a positive mm -hmm. because uh, despite uh, you know the negative of losing guys and a little bit of the unknown and having to kind of recreate yourself and, and you know have some creativity about who's carrying the football, how are you getting touches to certain guys, uh, you know, the same thing goes on the other side on defense, right? So, the, so next week against UC Davis, now they're going to – you know, uh, it's not going to be a brand new offense for this Bobcat O, but you know, Sean Chambers solo without Tommy Malott, it's going to look different, right? And so, uh, it can you know, good job just turn it into an advantage because UC Davis's defense, you know, they're not exactly sure what to expect out of Sean Chambers without a Tommy Malott back there. So, uh, yeah, much credit to the to Coach Housewright, to Coach Vegan, um, and the and Coach Armstrong, Coach Beal. Uh, doing a great job um, with a lot of adversity in their face. Takes good coaches, and uh, the players stepped up, and another great road win. All right, let's take a look at the first Interstate Bank highlights of the game. Sean, Ch Sean Chambers, the uh, game-winning touchdown at the end of this contest, and that was the first Security Bank highlights of the ball game. We've got one more timeout, and then we will uh, wrap things up as Montana State wins it today, 38 
to 35 over Eastern Washington. This is the Ribbon Chop House post game show. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield. Back one final time on the Rib and Chop House post-game show. Keaton Galogli alongside uh, Mikey Ryder up in the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth as the Cats win it today, 38-35 over Eastern Washington. All right, Mikey, uh, two pieces of business to take care of to finish this thing off. First, we get our uh, McDonald's delivery of the game presented by your locally owned and operated McDonald's of Montana. Who's got the delivery of the game for you? The delivery of the game is going to be Sean Chambers uh, and his rushing attack. Just did such a good job. 19 carries. Uh, yeah, or excuse me, 28 carries for 178 yards. Um, what a performance by him today. All right, so Sean Chambers, the McDonald's delivery of the game. Uh, hit me with the uh, Levitt Group impact player of the game today. i got to go back to that offensive line who did such a good job. Rush Reimer, JT Reed, um, Justice Perkins, Perkins, and Cole Sane. Um, I know they had some other guys that uh, might have gotten in there a little bit. Oh, yeah, M Marcus Weir, excuse me, as well. Um, just a really good job uh, clearing holes and leaning on that, that uh, Eastern Washington uh, defensive line who had some, some veterans. And so what a really good performance by that O-line. Two guys over 150 yards apiece. Chambers 178, Elliott 156 on the ground today. Uh, uh, just uh, incredible stuff from those two guys as uh, the Bobcats win it 38 to 35. All right, uh, get you a couple of the scores from around the uh, Big Sky. There's one game coming up tonight, but everything else is a final. Northern Colorado wins it at home pretty convincingly against Idaho State, 35-14. Idaho takes down Northern Arizona on the road comfortably, 27-10 to in that game. Yeah, and Coach Jason Eck, 
uh, he is doing a great job there in Moscow. He's a he's a heck of a ball coach. I had an opportunity to coach with him at MSU when he was here, and longtime uh, South Dakota State guy. He's got the uh, the Vandals rolling down there. So they get the win on the road at Northern Arizona. Uh, the Grizz, uh, they, they dismantled Portland State 53-16 to in that game at home. They had a big lead at halftime. Sacramento State, man, they, they knock off Colorado State easy. 41-10 to on the road in Fort Collins. Man, Colorado State 0-4 now. That is tough. And Sac State taking care of their business. That is a heck of a win for uh, Sac State. And then... Uh, Big matchup tonight, Weber State at UC Davis. You got two of the most prolific quarterbacks early in the year on either side, both up around 800 yards of passing already. And be able to watch that game maybe a little bit tonight if you want and start scouting out two of the future opponents, including uh, the next opponent for Montana State with UC Davis on tap coming up next week for the 8:15 kick. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock for, uh, for that ball game. All right, Mikey, we did it. We're through uh, week four. We're into Big Sky play. Montana State, number four team in the nation, taking down Eastern Washington, which was 15 in the nation coming into this game. Bobcats are now 3-1, and 1-0 in Big Sky. Eastern Washington falls to 1-2, and 0-1 oh in conference action. This was a, an incredible game, and the Bobcats found a way to get the win. Yeah, and a, a tough one on the road, and coming up here to Cheney is always difficult. So opening conference play with a W, with a lot of momentum, and uh, excited to see those Bobcat fans next week. And um, for those that won't be there, those hunters that are out there chasing elk, hopefully you can tune in. No doubt. So, again, back home for the next two weeks. UC Davis next week, 8-15 on the air at 7. And then October 8th, homecoming. Idaho State is in town. That's a 2 o'clock kickoff. We'll be on the air at 1 o'clock for that one. So those are the next two games on October 1st and October 8th. All right, that will do it for Mikey Ryder, our analyst, uh, Dan Davies down on the sidelines, Dylan McPhail, our engineer up at the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth, and John O'Connor back in the studios today. We appreciate you tuning in and spending your Saturday with us. Can't wait to talk to you again throughout this next week. We'll have the Bobcat Insider podcast out on Tuesday afternoon. We'll have our next edition of Cat Chat on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., and then our next Bobcat Insider television show on Thursday night at 9 o'clock on the CW before we get back in action on Saturday. This is Keaton Gilogli saying so long from Cheney, Washington. A pleasure to chat with you today. Looking forward to talking to you again at 7 o'clock for the 8.15 kickoff between Montana State and uh, UC Davis back in Bozeman. Final score for a final time today, Montana State has won it on the road at Eastern Washington, 38 to 35. This is Montana State football from Learfield.